Good afternoon, friends, followers, town members. I hope you're all doing well. Happy Monday. Oh, finally, the kids are back at school. <laughs> I love them to bits, but two weeks is far too much. Also means that my streaming schedule will be rudely interrupted as, uh, as well whilst they were off school. But thankfully, they are now back and we're kicking off this week with a flight that I have wanted to do for... Um, well, a good six months, I would say. Certainly since uh, EasyJet started initially flying uh, to this destination, which I am going to struggle to pronounce. Uh, Akiori, I think, is uh, how it's pronounced. Someone will correct me at some point, I'm sure. But, um, yeah, normally when we fly to Iceland, we're off to Reykjavik. But no, um, Akiori, whatever it's called, um, which is on the northern tip of Iceland, has an absolutely stunning approach. Um, and the way that the winds are... Um, ahead of today also means that we get to do the localizer zero one approach which is high workload it's not straightforward a little bit like Tivat that we did um, last week uh, a little bit like um, Innsbruck as well we're flying a little bit down a valley and of course this time of year uh, it should look stunning by the time we get up there and we get a good two and a half hours flight time to sit chat relax and uh, and speak about things so really looking forward to spending the afternoon with you whether you're uh, I know some people are actually still uh, here in the UK they're actually still on their Easter holidays uh, this week so shout out to you guys if you're uh, bored grab a drink come take a seat and um, enjoy the next few hours with us and for those of you who are working from home hopefully this will uh, take you through the afternoon with some gorgeous sights and um, fun stuff we're of course flying the Airbus A320 Phoenix edition this afternoon and um, on that sim as per uh, as per usual so uh, welcome to those of you coming on board hey David hey TH Sweden Eric's here as well aviation crew hello guys and to those of you watching over on Twitch as well good uh, good afternoon thank you for joining us so we'll have a look at the operational flight plan as per usual and um, interestingly enough as well, because of the weather that is up there at the moment, I've had to do a landing dispatch uh, calculation because it's raining. Uh, well, no, it's not raining. There's a bit of light snow up there. Um, so we just needed to check before I went any further that we could actually get in um, today. And we can. So... Um, that's fine, there's no regulated landing weight. We've done our dispatch landing calculation. Uh, let's have a look at the um, at the operational flight plan. Uh, have I remembered to share my tablet with the stream? No, I haven't. Bear with me one second while I just get this to load up. Um, Dennis says hello from Nova Scotia. Hours until the eclipse. Going to see this model in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Dennis, um, the actual moon passing over the sun will be modeled in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I know because I've seen this before. Um, uh, will it all go dark? No, I don't think that has a feature of Microsoft Flight Simulator just um, just yet. Right, let me get... Uh, there we go. That's what I was, uh, that was looking for. Uh, landing mission, not a chance to check that out yet, but um, we'll, do it at, uh, we'll do it at some point. Uh, right, so here we go, operational flight plan. Um, zero fuel weight is full. We're taking a whole 180 passengers up to Iceland with us today. Full payload. Um, no underload there. Our takeoff weight is about 70... Uh, well, by the time we've got a bit of extra fuel, maybe about 70, uh, 70 and a half tonne. Usual cost index 360. We'll check if we can get to that straight after departure. Tailwind of 19 overall. That's good. I think most of today's flight actually looking at the weather is more or less a crosswind, but it's slightly in our favour. So that's um, that's good. Well, she can I make a video on making an engine out procedure? Uh, please, uh, there is already one uh, readily available on the channel uh, explaining how to use the secondary flight plan to. Um, to sort out your uh, your engine out procedure, and we'll be doing that today anyway. So to stick with us, well, so you'll see how that's done. Um, right, so plug fuel is about nine and a half tons. We're going to take some more because it is a little bit of light snow, and the weather's not forecast to get any better. Uh, let's just have a look at the terrain. So we've got nothing here. What we've got in Iceland when we get up there. Uh, obviously, flying north over the UK today. Uh, oh, it's okay, so um, nothing above 10,000 feet altitude-wise in case of decompression, so that's fine. Looking then right at the top of the screen there, um, we have got worst case scenario for the weather. Ceiling 600 feet, oh, that could be a problem. Um, visibility 1,500 feet and a six-knot crosswind, well, that's okay. Um, 
Visibility 1500 feet, again, that could be an issue. We'll have a look at the charts in a moment. We're going to give it a go, and if we need to, if it doesn't look like we're going to get in, then uh, Reykjavik will be uh, will be where we're headed instead, sadly. Uh, let's have a look at the forecast. So, here is the forecast. At the moment, winds 340 at 12, that's fine. We've got visibility is 35, that's okay. Light snow, scattered about 1000 feet, that's okay. Um, the problem we've got really is, we'll have a look at the minimums in a moment. Uh, QH 999, that's fine. So what's the forecast uh, telling us? Yeah, basically just going to be light snow. Um, overcast 600, yeah, so that's what the, the, the worst case scenario was there, overcast 600 feet. Um, Keflavik's fine, yeah, we'll get into there. That's uh, that, that, that's no issue. Vega, I ain't going there. Uh, I have no idea where that other airport is. Um, that, per, per, uh, that actually doesn't look very good, does it? Vertical, vertical visibility, 500 feet. Um, although, I don't actually know what sort of nav aids they've got and landing, uh, what runway capabilities that has. Uh, and Edinburgh, of course, if we have to turn around and come all the way back to, uh, to Edinburgh. So that is our flight route. We're laden with waypoints until we get over the, uh, over the Atlantic. Weather, let's have a look. Uh, so, icing below 15,000 feet and light turbulence up to 30,000 feet. We should be above that. Okay. Uh, no times Gatwick as. Uh, is that closed yet? Oh, yeah, that is closed. Taxiway Juliet closed between Uniform and Hunter Point Juliet forged work in progress. We'll have a look at the charts in a moment, see if that actually affects us. Uh, and then, temporarily in case of eruption in Iceland, I don't think we need to worry about that sadly in the simulator. Maybe one day, maybe one day. Um, yeah, other, other than that, that's, uh, that's fine. Alright, <coughs> well, what are we going to take with us? Well, we've got no um, regulated landing weight today, so I've already checked that. So the most extra fuel uh, we could take is... Oh my god, we can't actually take any extra fuel. <laughs> I'm just looking at that. Um, we can't take any extra fuel. We are going to be taking what we've got and keeping a close eye on the weather as we head up there. And also uh, the CNR for Catholic is... Uh, 2.8 tons. So right, if we get to three tons, it looks like we're getting, we're not going to be getting in, and I'm not confident we're going to be getting in. Then um, we might be looking at heading to Kefalovi. Uh, we have be gutted about it because this approach is um, absolutely, uh, absolutely beautiful. Okay, that's fine. Uh, now, what was that note I'm about the uh, Juliet close between Uniform and Juliet Four? Okay, where is that? Julia <coughs> uh, between Juliet and Juliet f uh, close between where and Juliet four did it just say? My memory is terrible. Uh, uniform and Juliet four. Where's uniform? Juliet 4 and there's uniform oh, okay so all this is closed all right so if Fatsim are replicating that we'll be taxiing down 26 right then won't we that'd be neat that'd be something different interesting to see if Fatsim are going to uh, going to do that uh, so West End 112 so that expected tax then is Lima then either Quebec Romeo um, probably stay on to 26 right to be honest all the way down there and we can probably take off at Golf uh, that's the we'll plan for anyway Golf 1 departure uh, expecting Lambo 1 Zulu that's uh, straight out left turn no speed restrictions apart from the usual 10,000 feet and initial climb is 5,000 MSA 23 up to the Lambo 1 which we'll have uh, set up shortly. Transition altitude, 6,000 feet. Okay, yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, the brief for Gatwick, we've done it that many times, doesn't um, <coughs> doesn't need too much uh, going over, does it? 
All right, so let's go find our aircraft then. We are, as I say, on that sim. Here we go outside. Oh, the weather looks nice here, doesn't it? So whilst we are uh, admiring the view, I'm just going to tell um, ground services that we want the fuel loading up and hopefully GSX will uh, sort that out for us. There we go. Lovely. Right, let's get on board. Hey, Lulu. Good to uh, good to see you. You join us on a fantastic route today. Okay, so let's, uh, let's crack on with the usual stuff. Uh, pumps are off, external power, packs are off, nav logo lights, they're fine. Uh, spoil slaps, parking brake, transponders 2000, acupressure, not yet pressurized. Got the company message through, that's fine. And let's, uh, let's grab ATIS. Where, uh, what frequency is that on? 3652. Sounds like uh, we're in France listening to the music. <laughs> why can't I hear that? Oh, I know why I can't hear it. One second. Vision level 75 went 14007. Wind variable between 100 and 190. Visibility 10 kilometers or more. Few clouds at 4500. Temperature 16. 2.06. QNH 1004. Delivery is closed. ATC continues with ground on 121.805. Data link clearances are available. Log on Echo Golf Kilo Kilo acknowledge receipt of information Delta and advise aircraft type on first contact. Lovely. Shall we do a data link clearance departure then? Uh, I can do that. We don't get to do it very often. See if it works. Uh, let's just go to um, do menu. Uh, Atsu. Tell the aircraft what we're doing. Turn the screens up. Yes, Iceland. Very cold. Uh, right, data link clearance. Let's uh, let's try that. Two and a half hours the flight time today. Hey, Tony. Good to see you. Uh, okay, so ATC. Oh, what am I doing? AOC ATC request and pre-departure. Gate number one one two. We've just received information. Delta, Echo Golf, Kilo Kilo, Type A320, and send that off. Hopefully that will be uh, responded to shortly. Okay, well, whilst we're uh, doing that, let me just finish setting up the aircraft then. So QNH 1004, that's fine. Audio control panel, monitoring the guard frequency, that's fine. We'll just uh, turn that up as well. Uh, monitor the cabin. Switching panel, engine mode mass selection, that's fine. Ground crew still might have that down there doing their job. Constraints on 1004, that initial climb was 5,000 feet, set that. Refueling's now underway. And uh, let's just check three and a half greens. CFMs, valid direct cycle, wonderful inner request. Uh, flight number, easy 28 X-ray Tango, what a call sign, who comes up with them? Easy, X-ray should be a banned letter in an alphanumeric call sign. Uh, right, what we're cruising at, 36,000 feet I think I said it was. Uh, actually just before we do that. Grab the winds, Trapo 32486. There we are. 
5194 North 0107 West, they're all fine. Where are we? Stand 112 uh, 360 with a temperature of 54. Okay, and we're looking at 08 right for departure Lambourne 1 Zulu. And then so there is, uh, there's quite a bit to talk about with this approach. There is an ILS approach going into um, the room we're planning for today, ILS-01, but we can't do it. Um, airline's not permitted. It's a very steep angle, something like five and a half degrees, maybe 5.4 degrees, uh, and we're not permitted to do that. So we have to use the localizer, localizer 01. Um, I don't know if there's some RNAV approaches or there's some um, uh, lock A. Uh, in fact, let me just... Double check what we've got. Um, so we've got the lock ASR. Don't think this is the one we're uh, permitted to do. Uh, no, that's uh, Cat's aircraft can do it, but not permitted to do that. Um, so it should just be the localizer in one approach, I believe, which is. There we go. Um, interestingly enough, they've not given us uh, applicable visual approach because this is an offset. Um, it's an offset localizer as well. Um, I'm pretty certain this is the one, well, even though it says cat A and B at the top there, which is a bit off-putting. Um, well, ASR approach. I'm certain it's the localizer approach that. Uh, that we're authorised to do. It's not the ASR approach. So this is the one that we will be doing. So it is just the look zero one um, approach. Um, but we'll explain how to do this once we're uh, once we're airborne. Plenty of time to chat about that. Uh, so yeah, lock zero one, and that comes in via guild two. Insert. Uh, operational flight plan then has us at 1,069. I've got 1,067, so that's fine. Radnav page, only oh, Lambourne really to worry about here. We'll get that in. And we'll have a look at the inner B. Uh, pre departure clearance has that been received? It has. Not got a reply yet. 61 tons. Uh, zero fuel weight CFG is 31.5. Oh, I think the passengers are now starting to come on board. Yeah, I can hear the announcement. Uh, alternate fuel is one. Point said, uh, you know what? I'm going to go. I'm going to go 1.8 tons for this. And we are taking nine and a half. Strangely enough, it says it wants 10.1. We can't take 10.1. We'll be too heavy to land if we take that. Okay, so we are down by 600 kilograms. Um, now, we're not going to be too concerned about that. We're down by 600 kilograms if we want to land in um, our alternate with 1.8 tons. Now, obviously, we're just going to monitor that on the journey, and we can do our own calculations sort of on the fly, in-flight fuel calculations to work out at which point we need to bin off uh, Accurate if we need to and get uh, get ourselves uh, on the ground somewhere a lot more uh, where landing's more certain, like a nice ILS approach into uh, Reykjavik. So yeah, that's fine. Um, Takeoff weight then is 70.3 tons. Um, Scribbling this lot down. Uh, Takeoff CFG is 29.2, and then we'll have a look at. Take off performance calculations for that now. 
So it is dry zero, it right flaps one. No need to force toga. It's warm enough, we don't need anti ice, there's no clouds anyway. Uh, so don't need to worry about those. Packs will be off as per company SOPs. 30.3, and that CFG is 29.2. Live weather is synced. Intersection Golf 1. And let's pop those in. So. 1, 4, 3. 1, 4, 6. Hey, AV8. Good to see you. Hey, Christian Taco. Keep the stream muted in the background. <laughs> the joys of working from home, indeed. Although, if the stream's muted, we can say what we want about him. He won't hear it. Only joking, Christian. Um, and what is the ICO for Akieri? It is um, Bravo India Alpha Romeo, I think, if, uh, if memory serves. Flex 53. And... Zero, eight, right... So that's going to be 1003, 1003, 1003, 1003. Again, remembering that company SOPs now have amended these values because they're now using 800 feet instead of 1000 feet. Flaps 1, flex. Okay, that's all filled out. Wonderful. Engine out procedure then is standard 1700 feet and uh, it's a right turn to Willow. Hold at 3000. So save a bit of time. I'm just going to pop Willow straight into the box. That's the wrong willow. <laughs> I've just put a willow in that's about 2,000 miles away. <laughs> Don't want that one. Try again. Let's go with the one that's... Uh, oh, it's 4,500 miles away, actually. Let's go with the one that's just 10 miles away, shall we? <laughs> Not going to do that on uh, one engine, am I? Not with the fuel we've got on board. And ILS. Zero 08, right. No star. I believe Willow is one of the veers. There it is. Perfect. Okay, just check that works. Uh, because Randy says, uh, just sending stuff to the mate, uh, McDo is making you forget how to do it. I know, I know. I'm, I'm very, very uh, cautious. I don't want to do it just because, like you say, it's a bit of a perishable skill, isn't it? Uh, Fly Red Six. Bleh, try that again. Fry Renaltex. Good afternoon. Ah, have we got a um, pre-departure clearance? Ah, we have. And Roger. Send that. All right. Uh, so we'll go through that in a second, but we've got the box all set up. That looks uh, like what we need it to do for the engineering procedure. Uh, so, clear to Akiri, uh, runway 08, right, Lambo 1 Zulu departure, initial climb 5000, squawk 0357. 0357. When ready, call 121805. We will indeed. Oh, I do love it when I'm not being constrained by time at all today. I'm not on the school run this afternoon, so... That's definitely uh, a nice feeling. I am on cooking dinner duties, though, so I can't be too late. 121805, just chat, let's cry. Uh, if I never call voice. Perfect. That's, uh, that's all good. No more pages. Fine. Alright, close that. 
So, um, let's quickly just uh, run through the brief then. So, wins from the right as we're departing 140 at uh, 7. Uh, a few clouds, 4,000 feet, so anti ice isn't going to be needed. 16 degrees, QH 104, that's all set. Um, aircraft is fully serviceable apart from the weather radar as per usual. We've checked the no times, we know about that uh, runway closure, uh, that taxiway closure, meaning we might be taxiing down the runway today if Gatwick are um, adhering to those rules. Um, and that's fine. Threats to be aware of at Gatwick, just usually the, gen the, the, the usual stuff, it's, um, it's, it's just crowded, isn't it? Yeah, just a crowded place, and particularly if some people are unfamiliar with that no-time change. Let's just go through and uh, get the picture in our heads of what we're all uh, expected to do. So we're stand 112, expect to push back ta facing west, taxi down on Lima, and then either Romeo or... Uh, yeah, Romeo or Quebec to uh, Juliet. If we're not emulating the no times, it'll be Juliet all the way to the end. We'll tell them we can take off one. If they are, then we'll expect taxi on 26 right. And again, departure on uh, on Golf 1. Departure itself, straight out, left turn to begin with. No speed restrictions. MSA um, 2300, um, 5000 feet initial climb. And don't contact anyone until ATC have told us to. Transition altitude 6000 feet. Uh, so, that's all the usual stuff, that's our picture, everything will be kept in managed mode um, for the departure, so that's, uh, that's fine. Engine out procedure then is uh, standard, if we've lost an engine then after, um, once we've confirmed that, I'll pull the heading bug, we'll climb out, and then once we've, uh, we've shut the engine down, and we've reached our engine acceleration altitude of 1,700 feet, push the level off, accelerate away, clean up on schedule, and uh, make the right hand turn to um, to Willow. Um, one thing I have not done, just in uh, briefing that, I didn't put the hold in, did I, for Willow? What, uh, what was the hold? 284 left turns. Hey, Da Vinci. Good to see you. Matthew K. Good afternoon to uh, to you. Uh, Final wheel. You swerve a lot while taxiing. Do I have a video on rudder settings? I don't actually. Um, I use the settings that uh, Phoenix have provided, and it seems to work quite well for uh, for us. So. With all that, we're all ready here. We've already got our clearance, so that's fine. Um, boarding is still underway, um, I believe. Uh, so I'm going to get the APU uh, fired up, and that's one less thing done, isn't it? We're at Innerbuilds, um, London Gatwick Airport, by the way. Um, if you want to pick this up, you can support the channel at the same time using the link at the top of the uh, chat or down in the video description to purchase your Innerbuilds scenery through that link. As I say, it supports the channel as well, which is uh, really kind of you if uh, if you're in the uh, in the market for some new uh, new scenery or, of course, aircraft. Right, APU is uh, firing up. That company message has come through. So so what we've got as our final CFG for takeoff, it is takeoff weight 70.3, perfect, and CFG is 29.2, excellent. No LMCs. Refueling has now completed, nine and a half tons. Don't want to burn any more fuel of this than we need to. Um, that's a that's a good point actually. Something I should have briefed. We will do single engine taxi for this. We'll do single engine taxi and we'll start as we pass the fire station. Usual uh, usual place to fire up the second engine. Save as much fuel as we can. APU is up and running. Pumps on. External power can now come off. Seatbelt signs on. to the uh, OFP, we should have pushed back 
about seven minutes ago, so apologies to the passengers for uh, for being late. Never mind. Oh, where's my checklist? In fact, it tells us on the board in front of us we're, uh, we're eight minutes late. Okay, copy preparation checklist. Aircraft acceptance is completed. Fuel quantity is nine and a half tons. We've checked balance. Seatbelt signs are on. It is. We've got three now green. Q and H one zero zero four set cross checked and two hundred and thirty feet. Let's get on frequency then. Behind point Chiliot seven via Sierra Chiliot Tango and T six right. Hello, Captain. We are ready for. Chiliot seven via Sierra Chiliot Tango. I think it's just giving the taxi via two six right. Goal. So. Means they are respecting those no times. Wonderful. Get on ground. Good afternoon. Easy two eight X ray Tango. Requesting uh, push and start. Stand one one two. Easy two eight X ray Tango. Get on ground. Very good afternoon. Information echo current. Stand one one two. Push and start approved. Face west. Push and start approved. Facing west and we'll uh, pick up echo for easy two eight X ray Tango. Ground, good afternoon, Air Train uh, 848 at 7567 with Echo uh, requesting clearance to Shanghai. Air China 848 going ground. Flight to Shanghai, that is awesome. Uh, say again, Air uh, China 848. Air uh, China 848, are you able to take the frame 1 Zulu departure? Uh, AFM, we can take the frame 1 Zulu departure, Air China 848. Traffic ground, very good afternoon. Easy 70 Foxtrot Kilo, requesting taxi to the gate. Easy 70 Foxtrot Kilo, Roger, taxi, Chile at the top of the whole short of Kilo, expect stand 49 right. Taxi, Chile at uh, Quebec Alpha, stand 49 right. Easy 70 Foxtrot Kilo, just confirm it's Juliet Papa, hold short of taxiway Kilo, expect stand 49 right. All right, so before start checklist, parking brake is on, takeoff data has been confirmed, windows are closed, EFBs on flight mode, doors are closed, not uh, armed. Parking brake released. Okay, engine one start for single engine taxi, engine mode to ignition and starting engine one. Oh, I had a cup of tea before we started. This was a bad, uh, bad move. I'm not sure if you got my previous message, but we can take the uh, on up on three and one zero departure. Uh, China eight twenty one. I'm just sending you a review and take. Stand by. Please observe the cabin crew member closest to you as we are about to demonstrate the safety features of our Airbus A320 aircraft. Thank you. I love the fact that there's a, uh, a flight going to Shanghai Air China. I wish I had time to do those flights. For your attention while we take you through the safety procedure. Easy one four head to uniform unfortunately there's nothing further. Monotina for one two two decimal eight. Enjoy your flight, bye bye. One two two decimal eight, bye bye, easy one four head to uniform. I do find the The performance and frame rates of the Innerbuilds Gatwick better than the freeware one. Easy eight two uniform four stroke Gatwick ground have eight number two Victor and circle you back. Please set parking brakes. And parking brakes set. Use the gonna have five thousand bajets. Are we recommended you keep it fastened at all times? If you aircraft is fails, masks will drop from above. Initial climb is five thousand feet, isn't it? Uh China eight for eight Gatwick ground. Go ahead, eight China eight for eight. Interesting. Okay, Chad 84, Eagle, Shanghai, Frame 1, Zulu Depart, just walk 4230. Information, echo. Would have expected that to be blue. Okay, the destination for the Frame 1, Zulu Depart, just walk 4230. Ah! That's why. Okay, Chad 84, we back, correct. I'll set the FCU to 6, that's why we do. So I'll check the FMAs. Thinking something's clearly not right there. Da Vinci picked it up. Maya Papa and Lima is the seven two for Left is clear, right is clear. Easy eight T uniform Fox Dot Gatwick ground. Ready to copy. Easy eight T uniform. Okay, engine one is stable. Seven three zero six. 
Leave the APU on. Yellow pumps on. Leave the HP the full first, I think. correct. Spoilers are in a flaps. And the trim. Set. Go on then, get out of the way. Alpha Alpha two five one taxi kilo Romeo zero eight right to Harding Point Juliet seven. We'll wait for him to uh, respond to that and then we'll request Alpha, our taxi Alpha, clearance. Alpha 251, taxi via Kilo, Romeo and hold, uh, hold 12, your 3 right at uh, Julius, uh, Juliet 7. Zero 03 right? Alpha Alpha 251, just confirm it's Kilo, Romeo, then taxi along 268 to Holding Point Juliet 7. Alpha Alpha 251, okay, taxi alone. Just look at where Juliet 7 was, that's right at the end there then. Again okay, we're ground easy. Two eight X-ray Tango is ready for taxi and we can take golf for departure. Easy two eight X-ray Tango ready to taxi. Lima Sierra, hold short of Juliet. Lima Sierra, hold short Juliet, easy two eight X-ray Tango. Easy nine five echo ready on this. Lima Easy nine Sierra, five echo ready on the ground. Let's get all this lot on. Let's go. Cool. Five Echo Romeo on Papa. Flight control check then. So I'll go full Easy left. Nine, five Echo Romeo coming ground. Full Hello, right. Neutral. Lima, Quebec, full Alpha, up. Thunder, five, six, zero. Full down. Neutral. And rudder. Papa, Lima, Quebec, Alpha, right. and uh, 560, EV95, Echo Romeo, sorry about that. And neutral. I wish these tuck drivers would get out of the flipping way. So, nice easy taxi route, this one. Basically, just follow this taxiway all the way around. Easy 288, Tango Taxi, Harding Point Golf 3 via Lima, Sierra, Juliet, Tango and T6 right. Taxi Holding Point Golf 3 via Lima, Sierra, Juliet and 26 right. Easy 288, Tango. Alpha 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 251, there's nothing further, Monica Unicom 122 Goodbye, have a nice day. It's not too often we get to taxi down this way. Okay, cancelling the master caution. Okay, China 8487, ready for pushing south. Disregard that ECAM. Uh, China 840, Roger, Thunder 5, 6, 7, pushing south, approved face at south. Third approved facing south, China 840. Now we're going to Ultra 63, A330900 in Neo at Stanford, 3-4 left, QNH 1203, information, Echo Request, Alpha Trans to New York. Hey Lee, good to see you. Delta 63, Gallic Ground. Hello, Delta you flight to New York. Departure. Awesome. Which departure did I put again? Get Delta 63? Uh, CK 4085. Yeah, of course, one that's in. Hopefully, you can hear them. Could you send in text Delta 63? And Delta 63, that's the way. Right, let's get the, uh, the other engine started then. So. Get that off, get that on. Engine mode selected back to ignition and we're starting engine 2. Alpha 
Uniform Fox request pushback. Easy 82, Uniform Fox, don't stand for it. Left position start approved, face west. Push us out of both face west, stage Uniform Fox. Do like it when Vatsim um, replicates real down. world procedures with taxiway closures and things. Delta 63, Claire, Dern, New York, JFK, it's the Inver 1 Zulu departure, they're after reading Inver. November 63 to Southampton. Squawk 76, correction, Squawk 2716, Echo Cunt, thinking H1003. Cleared to New York via the Ember 1 Zulu departure, Squawk 2716, H1003. Just keeping an eye on Engine 2's parameters. Well, there we go. November 63 to Southampton, I'll send that text. So Engine Mode Selector now After goes back Inver, to normal. November 63 to Southampton, Delta 63. That's Delta not required, three, three, and that's correct. not required. Okay, so just a couple of final things then. Uh, ground, to rebrief, no LMCs. Go for a golf six departure, two six right, that's Easy fine. Engine out procedure ground. is standard, standard straight out, out level off 1700, Please right turn, right willow, 3000 feet the hold. Up. Departure is, uh, yeah, Lamo 1 Zulu, straight out, left turn, and our stop climb is 5,000 feet, no speed restrictions. Hey, Elliot, good to see you, mate. It's been a while. You must have been keeping busy. Mind you, I've been busy, so. Easy 28 Exo Tango, unfortunately there's nothing further. Monotuna, come on 122 Decimalate. Enjoy your flight. Bye bye. 122 Decimalate, thanks for the service. Easy 28 Exo Tango. Now, obviously, this is not an active runway, so we don't need strobe lights or anything. Yeah, we're to be ready to push the Delta 63, roger, there's traffic behind. Just confirm the squawk set to 2716. We'll set squawk 2716. Right, quick listen out on Unicom then. So, whilst we're rolling down here, the taxi checklist. Uh, well, actually, we need to do the after start checklist to begin with now that both engines have started. So, anti ice is off, ECAM status is checked, pitch trim is 29.2, rudder is neutral. Taxi checklist, flight controls have been checked, flap setting is config 1, FMA, climb now blue 152, 5000 blue, radar on predictive winch you're on, ECAM memo should have takeoff no blue. Just wait for the cabin. The FB is stored and disconnected. And we've got golf just here. I'm just double double checking. Is that golf? That doesn't look like golf to me. This might be golf. Next one. Come on, cabin crew. Hey, flying Dylan. Is the over overhead not working? We'll give that a uh, we'll give that a, a smack in a minute. Oh, really? Yeah. Six one heavy behind the departing Swiss Air, lining up in position to an enter it. Hi, Gavin. All the passengers are on board and we're ready to go. I'll bring you a cup of tea after we've taken off. Sounds good to me. Okay. Um. So, Eka Memo, now we've got takeoff. No blue. Listen on frequency. I've not heard anyone coming into Gatwick. I think we're good. The approach path looks clear. So, Gatwick traffic easy, 2A X ray tango, lining up runway 08 right via Golf. Uh, 
the lineup checklist. So Kevin is secure. Take off runway two uh, zero eight right. Fire uh, Golf uh, TCAS T A R A Pax one and two off. Oh, looks like a lovely day here. The weather is not that nice in Iceland today. Hello, Mona. Diesel traffic, Air Canada 861 Heavy, IFR departure to the north, taking off runway 09 or right. We'll be flying the yield tip 1, Juliet departure. All right and then, uh, so take off, start the chrono. And engine 1, cr uh, correction, engine 2, three, critical. It's correction 835, whiskey on a 6 minus final for a Stable, set takeoff thrust. Command flex SRS runway, auto thrust blue. Takeoff thrust set. Climb gear up. And nav. Just climb, climb. Hydro traffic stupid. Eight. Both packs are now back on. Part one engaged because I'm bored of flying. That's S speed past. Let's give that a second. And let's clean up. Flap zero spoilers disarmed. No further ATC, nothing on TCAS. So let's climb now. So thrust climb up climb 200 blue. Uh, Kuna, you thought you just missed the auto thrust blue off. They used to, Kuna, but they've now brought it in line with uh, the traffic, uh, five, with Airbus SOPs, so on, uh, it is called. Airbus. I should also call now auto thrust as well. I often forget the second call, but that's another new, another new thing. So cabin crew is now released. This is going to be a gorgeous flight up to Iceland. Really looking forward to today. I've wanted to do this for so long. Right, give him the overhead a kick. Hopefully that should be working. So, just check spoilers, flaps, gear. Get the lights off. Okay, 
Heathrow traffic is super at 35 ski package at runway 7 left. Temperature's 10 degrees. We're just now going through a cloud less, so we'll pop those on. Heavy 12, correction 13 miles now to the northeast of the field level 6,000. We'll be continuing to climb flight level 320. You'll tip one true at departure. Uh, Fruba, I normally do it manually. I can't remember when it was last set, so I, d I do need to update it. It might look a bit bit browner than it actually is in real life down there. <laughs> Having said that, if it should be, if it wants to look as realistic as it is where I am, everything just needs to be wet and a bog. Okay, no ATC around, let's just uh, hit direct Lambourne, which is quite often the case. Right, 10,000 feet, lights are already off. Let's clear out the RadNav page. Flight level 360 is doable, 34 is optimum. We might do 34 just for uh, for our initial climb then. A second flight plan, we can copy the active. And we want to do cost index 0. And we'll go 340. And three four zero blue. Uh, Lulu, considering there's no triple seven, uh, you're considering doing the cross the pond in the A three twenty. You could always use the headwind A three thirty. I mean, the difference between the A three thirty and the A three twenty is minimal. Um, with the headwind A330, it's very much um, in line with the A320. Just if you wanted something a bit beastier to uh, to fly. Hey PSV, good to see you. Says love the approach, especially one over the mountains into the valley. That's the one we're doing today. Uh, well, that's the way the winds are uh, the way the winds are blowing today. So that's uh, yeah, that that is going to be us. Definitely looking forward to it. I have. I've wanted to do it for so long. And fruit bat, we've just flown over your house. Excellent. It is looking quite brown down there, isn't it? Definitely need to give uh, Aki Seasons a bit of an update. Uh, Alan, I haven't changed my graphics settings since the last video, so they're still... still relevant. The traffic right there, FedEx 5220 is airborne, remain speed to back in uh, 1000. That's it. So, South End Airport's down there somewhere, isn't it? David, fly by wire often fails to follow the standard instrument departures. Ooh, it shouldn't do, David. I have to say, maybe pilot error. Hey, LB, how are you doing? How's work? Um, so my ground textures are provided by Rex AccuSeasons, which I think they've got a sale on at the moment. Might be worth checking that out. I think Southland Airport is down there somewhere. I don't know where. Over here somewhere. Very, very short runway. Um, Alan, if you type into uh, YouTube, just type in EasyJet Sim Pilot and Graphic Settings, you'll uh, you'll see them. I've only done a two, Alan, so <laughs> just pick the latest one. Traffic speed bed 850 Tango, taxiing runway 09 right via Alpha, Link 53, Yankee, November 11, holding short November Bravo 11. Heathrow traffic. 
Uh, Aviation Crew, I've no idea how much it is. You'd have to go to their website and have a look. Ooh, that's a bit of stuttering from the frame rates. Probably because we might be over a, uh, a photo uh, photogrammetry area. And indeed we are, yeah. So there's the gorgeous view of London. There's the Thames, Millennium Dome, London City Airport, of course. Can't quite see Heathrow under this cloud layer. That looks great, though, doesn't it? Heathrow traffic, speed of 520 via November Bravo 10, taking off from a 09 right. The London eyes just disappeared there behind the, uh, the wingtip fence. Uh, LB, that was my motto when I was a kid. Find a job you love, you never work a day in your life. Not everyone's lucky enough to do that, unfortunately. Right, have I still got anti ice because we're well above that cloud there. Oh, that looks nice, doesn't it? Those clouds are looking really... Uh, really realistic today. So that's neat. So we should be, looking at this, on the ground at about um, 1,600 Zulu time, that is. Zulu traffic delta, 320 going to be holding short of uh, November Bravo uh, for one way to a rate, uh, going to be departure. Lulu, I think one of the things that catches people out with the A330, particularly if you are used to flying it like the A320, which a from an avionic side of things and flight management computer, is it, you know they're, they're exactly the same but yeah when you come to landing the first thing that catches people out is you're so much higher <laughs> you're so much higher up in a 330 than uh, an a320 this is six four nine nine eight mile final zero nine left the traffic what time does the sun set in Iceland does anybody know Just wondering if it'll be dark or not. In uh, in real life, the approach we're doing has uh, like the runway, uh, the flashing strobe um, guidance lights to the airport, but they're not in the same. So hopefully, it'll still be at least a little bit daylight. Uh, through about 2030 UTC, oh, we'll be fine then, through about. David, anyone ordered the Wind Wing FCU? Alright guys, I'll share this with you now, just for watching us live. Okay, literally, about five minutes before I was about to go live with this, I got everything set up, there was a knock at the door, the courier arrived, and the Wing Wing the FCU is control. here for me to have a look at, unbox, review, compare with the Mini FCU, so that will probably be coming this week on the channel, so make sure you uh, you stay tuned to that. I'm, I'm sat looking at it and it's burning a hole, I think, oh, that's going to be, that's going to be very interesting. But yeah, it literally arrived five minutes before starting the... Uh, Starting today's stream. So look at our flight route then today. So. Lambourne, got Bookham's Park, just having a look what airfields we're going to be overflying. So we've got East Midlands, this isn't going to be a million miles away from there, is it? I do like East Midlands. Um, Leeds Bradford just there as well. Manchester will be over here to our, uh, our left. Got Glasgow and Edinburgh. Inverness. And then that's it. We're into um, Oceanic Airspace. We 
don't quite go into Shamrock Oceanic. We go straight from Scottish to uh, Reykjavik. Vega off to the right. Over Iceland, Elgos. And then Giltu. And that's where our approach starts. Should be a really nice approach then if the sun's still up. So when does the eclipse take place? Obviously I don't think it will affect us today, but that's uh, it's going through America, isn't it? Uh, Lulu, you had two A380s up there. Was that, that in uh, in Glasgow? One that couldn't get in the day before and diverted, and of course the scheduled one. Has Glasgow got space for two A380? Wait, well, must have. But why is the seatbelt sign still on? All those passengers still wanting to go to the toilet. My apologies. That looks like a semi-realistic view, doesn't it? Enjoy that. Hey, Jen. Um, loving the early streams. <laughs> this is... I suppose it's early. Uh, compared to the usual evening ones that we do. Tony says a partial eclipse for us from 7.45pm in the UK. What time's the sunset, Tony? Hasn't it gone by then? Uh, imagine if the eclipse affects Microsoft Flight Simulator. Mushy, it, it does in a way. I've seen it before because we've had a couple of um, solar eclipses uh, since um, Microsoft Flight Simulator was uh, was around. And the moon you do see moves in front of the sun, but it doesn't actually change, or it didn't uh, change how dark the simulator got. PSV, thank you. Forgot about that. Yeah, it doesn't actually change how dark the simulator got, so it's not going to affect it that much, if um, if that makes sense. Tony, rain there, so you won't be able to see it anyway. Oh, I'm fed up with the rain, Tony. The amount of rain that we're getting every single day. Every day I wake up thinking, I'll cut the grass today. Every day I get up and see that it's just had a deluge overnight, so that's not happening. Still, it's done with the, the best of intentions. Just about reaching 34,000 feet. Well, we've got about 4,000 miles to run. Uh, 4,000 miles. 4,000 feet to go. Um, do you know we can probably do 3.6 now? I'm, I'm happy to go 3.6, so let's just increase that. And that's our planned cruise, which saves fuel on today, a day like today where the weather's not great in... Um, uh, and we are fully loaded as well so we've not got any extra fuel so we have to do things like uh, the landing dispatch calculation which I was talking about earlier which I sort of did off stream um, to check that we could get in um, and the way that you do that is um, particularly when it's snowing as it is 
today up in Iceland, uh, you need to get a snow tam. Now, I do find snow tams aren't wonderfully easily and readily available. You, oh, you have to Google them. Um, so, the latest, um, the latest snow tam for. Uh, For his destination, let me just see if I can find one. Um, I'm literally just googling it at the moment. Uh, let's have a look then. So, that's a snow time from 2005, that's no good. Is this the largest? Uh, is this the uh, the best site to do? Uh, let's have a look. Zero four zero eight. Yeah, okay, that's today's date. That was issued at one 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 six, so that's not that long ago. Right, so the runway condition code there, as you can see, is five five five. That basically means that the start of the runway is um, so the first third is runway condition code four five. So that's the the touchdown zone. You've then got the uh, the midpoint of the runway. Then you've got the the end of the runway. Um, 100, 100, 100. That is percent. Um, so it is 100 percent wet. 100 percent wet. 100 percent wet. Uh, NR. I'm not actually sure what NR is. Uh, Anyone in the chat wants to Google that and uh, let us all know what NR is because I've no idea what that term means. But basically, the runway condition code is just uh, wet, wet, wet. Sounds like a boy band, doesn't it? So then we use that runway condition code, put it into the uh, landing information, and that gives us uh, our maximum landing weight and also tells us, oh, we're actually going to be able to stop in time. And yes, is basically the answer we are. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't be doing it. I think our, um, our dispatch landing weight was our... The runway is 2,400 metres and we are expected our regulated uh, landing dispatch distance was 1,730 metres and our maximum landing weight was about 78 and a half tonnes which is above the structural landing weight so we're fine there's there's no restrictions today. David says NR <laughs> stands for need raincoat. <laughs> Don't need one of those not in Yorkshire. Fruba says forget the eclipse might be time for a delta flight this evening then. Yeah why not. Okay a couple of thousand feet to go. Uh, Lulu says there's only 1380 stand at Glasgow, so they had to stagger them. Poor folks on the diversion were over 30 hours late. I think they ended up in Gatwick and then were overnighted. Uh, funnily enough, I did see um, two Singapore aircraft at Manchester at the same time yesterday, and I thought that must have had something to do with the uh, with the storm that was passing over us, because I can't recall a time when there should have been two Singapore airports at the same time. Uh, David, on the plus side, you don't have to cut the grass now as you seem to have a new pool. <laughs> yeah. It's just so boggy, isn't it? My um, my lad's in a football team, and... Um, oh, I'm, re I'm reliving my youth watching, uh, watching his, his, uh, his under-nine side play. It's awesome. But think about the sort of pitches that these, uh, these young lads play on. You know, sort of council-owned pitches, and they're just park fields basically and they're just bogs uh, this time of year they just, the, the matches just get cancelled so they don't get to uh, they don't get to enjoy the games because they're cancelled all the time and I know that this the, this football season is through the winter which is fine when you've got professional groundsmen looking after the uh, fields and things and all the parks uh, and all the stadiums have appropriate drainage but you know your local park down the road that's uh, that's just a bog, so yeah, they're, they're not allowed to play. So I think they've had about four or five weeks of games cancelled so far this uh, this season. 
Right, we've got Manchester just there, as uh, as you can see. Just over uh, over here somewhere. It looked like quite nice weather when I went out a bit ago, so... Manchester's over there. I, uh... I live over here. Looks like it's cloudy now. And that's my cult cruise. Uh, LB Shush, yeah, just, uh, just reading that, that's, uh, that is indeed a moment. Right, so, let's, uh, set TCAS 2 below. Constantine next 4. Reducing to minimum of 4 from the way 2 to right traffic. Lots of traffic coming into Manchester looking at TCAS just there as we can see. Um, right, let's make sure uh, nothing's broken. About, uh, six, hey, clever Trevor. Hola. We're flying the wrong direction for Ola, clever. Hey, everything's normal. Overhead looks normal as well. Dan's not here today either, so he's not going to uh, he's not going to break my aircraft. To be fair, we can't really land anywhere with uh, we, we, we can't land at our destination with a broken aircraft. There's too many, too many things that we need for this approach. Um, I've just got a message. I think we have. Ten minutes late. Were we ten minutes late? Okay. Um, even that's just quite Manchester. What's your current altitude? Um. Who can we blame? Yeah, Probably me for talking too much. We'll just go ODI. Uh, FedEx 5220, this is Rainer 2 Echo Alpha. I'm about 15 nautical miles behind you and 1,000 or 2,000 below. Um, say indicated airspeed there so we can keep separation on approach to Dublin. No problem, we are uh, indicating 280, uh, 5220. That's a firm, we're at 275 at this time. Absolutely brilliant, thank you. Hey, Bill Johnson. No worries. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining us. Six second, Michael. Final runway two three right. So much in traffic. Tower two Charlie two three right. Uh, right. Right. Let's have a look at some on route weather's then, shall we? So we've got Manchester just beneath us down there. <laughs> blame ATC. Always blame ATC. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so obviously Ma Manchester's, Manchester's beneath us. I can hear on the radio people landing traffic. there without it's issues, so let's go Echo Golf, golf. Uh, Papa Fox. No, Papa Hotel. Um, Echo Golf. I think Papa Echo is in Venice. Made that up. There's not that many on route weathers, is there today? And uh, Alfa Romeo. Let's see what's happening. Uh, David, anyone know why British Airways Air Lingus aren't listing flights from Gatwick to Dublin? I've got no idea, David. Manchester Fake Golf, remember we spot Golf departing 2 3 right, Manchester. It does seem a bit weird, though. Is that tailwind still helping us out a little bit at the moment? It is going to swing around a little bit later, though, I think. Clever, anyone going to be chasing the eclipse later today? What, in a Concorde, maybe? 
Concord used to do it, didn't it? Terrain Ahead 12, <laughs> great name. Good to see you, thanks for joining us. Yeah, Concord, you could pay an absolute fortune and chase the eclipse, couldn't you? Back when it was uh, back when it was flying. Uh, so Edinburgh, oh, that's fine, they've got decent weather. That's wide open. Easy ops, they've got the delay code. Um, I think that's in Venice. <laughs> Wherever it is, we can land there. It's somewhere, somewhere in Scotland. Um, what we got... At Akieri winds three four zero at thirteen, so that's still going to be runway zero one for landing. Four thousand vis yeah, meters apologies, visibility. Light snow scattered eight hundred. Hmm. Light snow and scattered eight hundred. Hello there. Radio check. Back to back. Fast station calling readability five. Oh, Lulu, your one claim to fame has been chewed out on a frequency by a certain now popular ex controller at JFK. I bet we know who that is. Um, please tell me it's on YouTube. Because <laughs> there's loads of them on YouTube. Brilliant if it, uh, if it is. Good afternoon, Jay Hook. Hope you're doing well. Right, well, that's it. Let's sit back and relax for a, for a, for a while. Jay Hook, you've just woke up. Are you kidding? Why have you just woke up? It's... What time is it? It's nearly 3pm local time. It's crackers. You're going to have to tell us about it now, Lulu. We're, we're all very intrigued to know what happened. At least I am. <laughs> Old age afternoon nap. Yeah, okay. Oh, you messed up a read back twice. Oh, they're, they're not very forgiving, are they, if you do that? I still sometimes listen to, um, because it really frustrates me over here in the UK. I love the fact that for so many different places in the world, um, you can listen, um, y y yeah, you can, you can listen to ATIS, uh, you can listen to air traffic control, can't you? Like, sort of, live sort of thing, um, various different apps and, uh, and things. So yeah, you can listen to AT uh, ATC live but you can't do it here in the UK it's uh, it's like legal to I don't know if it's legal to listen to it or broadcast it it's a very sort of archaic uh, law I mean I get it but come on let us listen so yeah listening to the ground controller at Kennedy is uh, it, it is often good fun So I'm just checking the charts for what we're going to be doing for landing because we need to have a bit of a, a comprehensive brief on this. Lots can uh, not go wrong, but 
it's not just an ILS straight down, off you go, enjoy kind of thing. Uh, Kazmini, is my FS Realistic Profile still available? I believe it is. I've not removed it, or I don't know if they get removed after a certain while, but... Yeah. Uh, Steve, can cabin lights be dimmed or even switched off from the cockpit in the Phoenix? Yes, I believe they can. Ah, right. Here's the approach chart that we're going to be doing. From Gil 2. Let me just grab it and then I will uh, bring it on screen and we can all enjoy it. So this is one of those approaches which is, I say, it's a bit like Innsbruck. <clears throat> okay, so this is the approach, the localizer A approach for Cat C, Cat D aircraft. So, yeah, that's us. Um, so we've got sort of a step down procedure to uh, to avoid terrain. Worthwhile doing. Uh, it's a steeper descent than normal. It's a localizer only approach. It's offset by 28 degrees. All all these things are are going to be interesting. What I wanted to see though was the minimums there, which is 1,250, which is all right, but the cloud base is 800 feet at the minute. Visibility is fine, but we've got to get low enough down to be able to see that runway before we can continue the approach. Um, so what what makes this uh, approach, you know, different to uh, to the normal is obviously it's a localizer only approach. We don't get glide slope or anything. Um, stabilized approach. Step down from gill two. Six eight five eight four three, and then three six for the uh, for the final descent point. Steeper descent rate than normal, three point three. The real airport has two sets of pappies as well, three point five on the left, five point three on the right, and that is because there is an ILS approach, um, which does come straight in, which is um, which is fine. But not in an A320, where um, we can't do a 5.3 degree approach. That's that's too steep. Uh, I don't think the pappies are going to look different in the sim. I've never landed here, so I don't know. But either way, the pappies on the left are the ones we're going to be looking at. So in real life, if you've got two whites, two reds on the left, then the right-hand side one should just be all red, uh, telling you you're, you're too low. Uh, so visual approach with prescribed flight track, that's uh, essentially what we do is we follow the localizer all the way down, level off at the, uh, at the minimums, 1,250, and then when we see the runway, we, uh, we turn towards it, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully land. Um, let's have a look at some other stuff on uh, here, yeah, so DME is required, yeah that's fine. Idea strictly to procedure due to high terrain, turbulence, um, altimeter errors to be expected. Expect localizer fluctuations outside of 60 miles from the lock DME. As missed approach point is below the 5.3 gradient, fly visually level until intercepting the 3.5 degree pappy gradient. 3.5 degree pappy is located on the left side. Localizer usable within 10 degrees of course line only. Yeah, and then uh, so once we get sort of here, we should have th there are lights to guide you into the runway, but they're not there in the sim. But as you can see, this is a valley that we're going to be flying down. So our approach begins at Gill 2, 28 degrees offset, like we've said. So there's a few things we'll be able to put in the box there to uh, to set up. Uh, the go around here, oh, this is okay. This is straight, pretty straightforward because, um, 
yeah, you've, you've basically got flat land and, um, and the ocean to the north of the airport. Landing the opposite runway, the go-around is a bit more convoluted, as just uh, you would expect with all of the uh, <coughs> all the terrain that's around it. But yeah, the, the, the thing that's uh, concerning me at the moment is just what the cloud base is going to do to our uh, minimums. 1,250. If we can't see the airport at that point, we are going around and then... I don't think the weather is going to actually improve. I'd say we'd have one good go, get down, and then we call it a day and go somewhere else. What's the elevation of the airport? It is seven, seven feet. Train ahead, are you allowed to go around after minimums? Oh yeah, of course you are. If you... B but the plan would be to uh, f basically fly the approach, get down to 3,600 feet, and we'll be doing this in F... I'll, I'll brief this more thoroughly uh, when, we, when we get there, but we'll arm the localizer, we'll fly the localizer on the, on the FCU, we use track FPA mode, set that to 3.3 .3 degrees, as we start going down, we will then level off. At, if we, you know, if we can't see anything, we level off at 1,250. We can't go below 1,250. So many accidents have sadly uh, been caused by um, it's, I say it's pilot error. Uh, unless that, well, no, it would be. There's, there's no other way around it. Um, pilot error dropping below minimums in the hope to get out of the cloud base and see that runway inside to land and unfortunately it usually goes wrong um, so we're not going to go any lower than 1,250 feet if we level off there or we can see the airport and we're happy so we'll, we'll, we'll level off there pick up the pappies you know, two whites, two reds and then we'll descend uh, on the uh, on the path 3.3 and land that's the uh, that's the plan well that will be the plan in a, a couple of hours or so if we get there though and we can't see the runway then we bin it off if we see the runway and become destabilized then we um, bin it off we'll see what fuel we've got whether we think we can have another go then if that is the case, we'll, we'll have another go. But if um, if we can't see the airport and weather is the root cause that we've had to go around, and the weather's not looking like changing anytime soon, why bother hanging around? We're just burning up fuel that we could really do with um, to get uh, to get somewhere safe. In this case, I think Reykjavik is uh, probably the the best option. Hey, Cameron, just been accepted with L3, the flight school, to do your uh, ATPL. Fantastic. You'll be able to teach me. Oh, right, Bonnie Scotland is ahead. I do love those clouds, the, the, the fluffy clouds that looks like you can just walk on them. So is anybody in the chat watching on school holidays today? Tony's watching from a hot Vienna. 28 degrees, Tony. Wow. Uh, Gabriel, do I have my Phoenix set to GPU or CPU? I think it's set to CPU. Clever, need to do the runway 3 to approach to Bogota. I think we might have done that, you know, Clever. I reckon if you search YouTube for EasyJet Sim Pilot Bogota, you or Bogota, whatever it is, um, you'll find an approach there. Might not have been the runway three two approach, but you'll find it there. One of my favourite ones, and I know we've definitely done this. 
One of my favourite non-EasyJet ones is uh, Kathmandu. Really enjoyed that one. A380, school holidays in Paris. Lovely. Inbound traffic, uh, Kilan 928 push. Star, stand two, on to Echo. Right, but on the ground in about two hours, I'm reckoning. Maybe a little bit less. Don't think we've got any ATC knocking about, sadly. No. So this is where, if I was in the cruise, and I got it set up, um, you'd be able to use Beyond ATC to fill in the gaps, um, which I think is a really, really nice um, sort of compromise between VATSIM and uh, areas that aren't covered. But a lot of people saying, well, you can't use Bats, VATSIM and Beyond ATC both at the same time because you need to be monitoring Unicom. Well, that's fine. You just monitor it on COM2, don't you? Kilo 928, pushing now, stand two. But you also, of course, and this is very important, when you're coming into an airport, I would get rid of Beyond ATC because you have to make a Unicom calls. If you have a quick look and see that there's no other traffic around, then that's fine. If you're just on your own in a random part of the world, then of course that's fine. Um, Doobity do. <laughs> do I prefer the 320 or the 737? Oh, mate, isn't the answer obvious? <laughs> I'll let you. I'll let you uh, have a guess. What? What? What do you think? Uh, Dodo, I'm excited for the triple seven. I'm not, but I bet Lulu is. Unless Lulu's fed up of that by now. Uh, do I know if Beyond ADC plays HF over this? Do you know what? Um, I've not actually tried that. I'll have to try. I'll have to try that and report back. Uh, Tony, you're going to use VATSIM in observer mode to get the traffic, but beyond ATC for the ATC. That's an interesting way of doing it, Tony. Uh, Aviate Paro Airport is that airport where um, that 737 training captain was just going absolutely mental. Um, if, oh no, no, was it? Was that Paro? There was there was one where inside the cabin there was a landing that was the most unstabilised landing approach I think I've ever seen, um, and that was coming into Paro, and the captain was like, oh no, the, the, yeah, the captain was like, oh yeah, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, go left, go left, go right, go right, down, and. She was like, oh my god, I'm going to die if I stay in this aircraft. Mushy, you're more excited for the Inables A350. <laughs> Fair enough. Paro is on my list of airports that I think, why? Why on earth did they build one there? Do you know what I really want to do? I had two things that I thought about doing today. Um, so obviously this flight, which I've wanted to do for so, so long. Um, and also, I I thought about, I, I really want to do a nice long haul cargo flight, something like that. Maybe not even cargo, but the, the Inabils have just updated their A300, haven't they? Uh, which I'd quite like to, uh, I'd quite like to test out because I've not had a chance to do that yet. But, I would like to. Um, Skyway 1342. No, just listen to AC. But I'd like to do a nice long haul somewhere. So I did think maybe we could start a flight sort of around now to fly maybe across the Atlantic. And then I'd sort of come back at about. Uh, after putting the kids to bed, after sorting their tea out, kids to bed and that. Uh, we'd, we'd, I'd sort of be here for two, three hours, would stream. I'd go and cook tea, get the kids to bed, and then come back uh, with the stream still running, of course. We've done that before, which seems to have been quite good. Lulu, you, you are going to be getting the 777 because you miss it. Yeah, but the good thing with that, Lulu, is you'd just be able to jump straight in it and fly. You won't have to 
You don't have to do anything. Hey, Goofy. You won't have to do a single thing. You'll uh, know exactly what you're doing. So if you're enjoying our flight this afternoon, quick reminder, please don't forget to hit that like button. Makes a nice diff uh, no, makes a, uh, a big difference to the channel. We were talking last week, actually, weren't we, about 777s and... Uh, the fact that years ago I got to spend a good few hours in one of the uh, British Airways 777 uh, motion simulators that they used uh, when I was, uh, yeah, when I was younger. And um, I said they they had us landing on, uh, they had us landing in Jersey, which not that much room for error, particularly in a 777, um, which we were able to do, which was nice. Do you know one of the other things they had us do, which um, was just for fun? But this was, oh, how many years? This was about a year before September 11. Um, and we took off in a 777 from JFK, flew towards Manhattan, and had me fly by rolling with a, you know, a very steep bank angle between the Twin Towers. And it was so much fun. It was really incredible to do, and obviously it's a motion simulator, so you feel everything. And they had us rolling with a hard degree of bank, flying this D-level sim, 777, between the Twin Towers. A year later, we all know what happened, and suddenly looking back, it was... Yeah, I don't really know how to quite put that into words um, after doing that, but that was something that a lot of the crew used to do if they had a bit of downtime in the sim, just something for a little bit of fun. Which is of course harmless fun. And then suddenly it became uh well <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, interesting looking back on things that you could do that seemed harmless at the time and then you think, my goodness. Uh do I use a pilot's life? No, no I don't. Uh, Noob 503, tutorials on how to land. Um, have you seen the flaring tutorial that uh, that is on there, that is on the channel? Because I think that pretty much covers um, a lot of everything that I'd be able to, to, to say to you, basically. Uh, every landing is different. There is no one size fits all. Um, definitely not. So, if you've got a crosswind, a tailwind, w what I would begin by doing, though, uh, Noob, is practice landing without any weather, without any wind, so you get a feel for what the aircraft is is going to do. I love one of one of the other ones that they can do uh, that they do at uh, at Gatwick is uh, <laughs> fly underneath the uh, the jet bridge at Gatwick Airport. Uh, if you know where uh, where I mean, well, pretty much where we were parked under today. So it's to fly in A three twenties, of course, nothing bigger. Uh, but yeah, flying under uh, flying under that. <laughs> Spare time after a sim check. How often does that happen? Hey, Yardy. Afternoon. Won't be long now until uh, we're over the Atlantic, I don't think. Simon Forrester, that is a good shout. FSI panel, definitely worth, uh, definitely worth getting. Uh, 
Uh, Noob, you follow the flight plan altitude to land. No, by the time you by the time you're on finals, you should just be following the uh, the ILS information, instrument landing system. I I would definitely Noob um, start at the beginning with a easy ILS tutorial. Forget about any other kind of landings. Work on ILS tutorials to uh, to begin with. Yardy, question regarding V Pilot. You reinstalled it last night, got FSL tail rules working, but um, a few models are missing. Do you know that those models are definitely provided by FSLTL Yardy? Is it something that you have seen before that you've now not got for whatever reason? So, what we are going to do now is I'm just going to double check what the weather was at, um, at Edinburgh. Uh, what was it? 2206. So they're going to be using runway 24. Alright, so second to flight plan. And I would look to. Um, new destination Echo Golf. Papa. Hotel. So I'm just popping in a route back to Edinburgh just in case we needed it. So that uh, that's now in there. There we are. One less thing to do in the case of an emergency. We'll update the time point as well now. Uh, so if we go to uh, time point, we'll have a look. Echo Golf Papa Hotel. So I've got halfway between Edinburgh and um, well, our destination. We'll pass that at uh, about half an hour, actually. Looking at that, a little over half an hour. Now, Lulu, you heard a heavy's going under the Golden Gate Bridge of the Sim. That doesn't surprise me. Uh, Yardy, don't try an FSLTL install. Um, question for you before you did, Yardy. Did you, you know when you, and, and I, I can uh, talk about this quite confidently at the moment because I literally did it before we started this flight. Um, did you have, um, you know when you reinstalled uh, VATSIM, did you, uh, there's three tick boxes, and I forget what they say, but one of them, the bottom one, is something like erase all your uh, previous config files. Did you tick that box and um, remove all those previous config files that you uh, that you had? Because I've come across this before in the past, uh, where you get really bad model matching for, for whatever reason. Um, and... I've had to click that button to uninstall all the config files and then redo it again. Oh, you've just said yes. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'll be honest then. I'm I'm not entirely sure. Right, let's have a look at our endurance at the moment. We're burning around 2.4 tons an hour. So we've probably got about three hours endurance around that. Hey, Wayne! How are you, sir? Wayne, it seems like ages since I've seen you in the chat. Hope you're doing well. I also use two different... Um, two different models for my... Uh, 
two different models for my VATSIM model matching. I use FSLTC, but I also use FS traffic models, because the FS traffic models I found were better on frame rates. Right, we might set up a poll now, because, well, we can. <laughs> Something that they uh, they added. Uh, so, give me a second. Let me see if I can uh, set this up. Okay, let's pop that to you guys in there and uh, I'll be interested to see the results on those. We'll leave that poll running for a while. I like the idea of being able to do this. Passes the time whilst we're flying, doesn't it? I'm happy to say my kids will be home from school soon. And I wonder how their first day back has been. Hey, Fruitbat. Been a member for 14 months now, celebrating your anniversary. Why no A320 in the pot? What other A320 are you waiting for, Fruitbat? Oh, the Inibil's A320. Mm. Who's looking forward to that? <laughs> are you looking forward to that? I, I would imagine if you're on X, if you're on Xbox, then you might be looking forward to that. Uh, David, am I using that auto FPS? I'm not. No, no. Good morning. Oh, sorry. Good afternoon. Even Morgan, Aviator. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Wayne, you've not been on the live streams as much as you Well, I've not been able to do as many live streams as I would like to do, Wayne, but I want to try and get that right, because I, I love doing them. I just love flying. And having you guys uh, on side as well as uh, as we fly just makes those longer flights tick by, but I, I do. I love longer flights. That might be my next pop. Yeah. What are your favourite kinds of flights? Uh, Tony, you didn't know Inibolds are doing A380? Yes, they are. Yeah. Hey, DC, good afternoon. Right, so who's winning in this poll at the moment? The A380 from Fly by Wire. Maybe the next question should be, when is that going to release? <laughs> when do people think that's going to... Uh, be available. We've seen it showcased so many times. In fact, I think the last question we had in the poll was um, would you rather they just release it now? And funnily enough, I, if I was a betting man, I would have bet that I, I would have got the answer to that wrong because most of you said that they don't want it to release it now. They want, you all want to wait, which is fine. Lulu, you're looking forward to the A350 just because of break to vacate. 
<laughs> that reminds me. Um, do you guys remember a stream? I can't remember where we were landing. It wasn't that long ago. Um, we were doing a flight, and it might even have been to Doncaster. I, I seem to think it was Doncaster Sheffield Airport when they uh, announced there's a chance that it might be reopening. Um, so do you remember that flight when we landed and suddenly I couldn't move? I, um, I th auto brake wouldn't arm down here, um, so that had bust. Uh, once we landed on the runway, I couldn't disarm the auto brake, um, and we were stuck. D d does anyone here in the chat remember that stream? So I just put it down to um, a random simism, you know things that occasionally go wrong in the world of Microsoft Flight Simulator. There are several things that go wrong in the world of Microsoft Flight Simulator from time to time. Um, I didn't really think anything um, anything else um, about it. And then uh, I came to uh, I came to uh, put stuff uh, put stuff away after the stream. And then suddenly I was looking at my Thrustmaster um, flap levers, spoilers, and thrust levers, etc. And down here. And my lad had been playing on Microsoft Flight Simulator. He's working his way through the lessons, of course. Why not? He's only nine. Uh, and he enjoys them. Just teaching, getting them on a good basis, just for general piloting and uh, aviation. Now, for those of you that have got a thrust um, master set up, you will know that underneath the uh, spoiler lever, there is a brake lever. So, uh, not brake, sorry. Uh, there's the gear lever. And then underneath, there is the um, auto brake lever. A brake to vacate, low, and then two, three, and max. Now, obviously, this isn't something that you get in the... A320, but it is available on uh, higher end Airbuses, so the uh, the larger 3, 330s and 350s. And I looked at this and I realised suddenly why my brake wasn't working. Because my lad had been faffing about and he changed the brake to... Um, I, th I don't know what he changed it to. He basically twisted it so it was turned on, which is why it was mucking up with my Phoenix mappings and we couldn't actually go anywhere. Uh, so yeah, my uh, myself and HD were working through the manuals, trying to work out what on earth could could have caused that, and what do we do? Is there a circuit breaker or something? And afterwards we're like, oh no, it's just my nine-year-old. He'd been faffing with the controls, and I've not noticed. <laughs> Clever Trevor, flying a high fidelity A320 in the sim is going to be. We've got a high fidelity A320 in the sim, what are you on about? Or are you talking about Xbox? Clever, you reckon July 2024 for the flyby A380? Interesting. I reckon after uh, Flight Sim 2024 is released personally. But. We shall see. Tony, how does the Time Models Manchester compare to Maco Sims? Stick with Maco Sim, I'll be honest. That that would be my my advice. Lulu, you think it's also the best looking jet in the sky? It is a pretty sexy aircraft, let's be honest. The A three fifty looks absolutely gorgeous. David, if it was Doncaster you probably most likely had the wheels nicked. <laughs> <laughs> That's Liverpool, mate. Hey, Lemon Wolf. Why isn't the 757 in the poll? I mean, I did put one Boeing aircraft in there, Lemon. Lulu, isn't every airport we fly into Doncaster? It is at the moment, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Mark. Good to see you. Um... Maverick, my Phoenix will not work with the throttles on the captain's pack. You just don't get it. Even followed my YouTube setup. Oh, wow. Uh, um, so I'm presuming, mate, you've, um, you've calibrated them in, uh, in the config box that, that using this. Yeah, I'm not going to do it now while we're flying, obviously. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm guessing you have done this. It 
it almost sounds if you've done that and it's still not working it sounds like something else is is linked to those controls which is obviously going to be be a bit frustrating for you i can't think of any reason why uh okatabe says he had the same issue he removed the calibration and fixed it uh, yeah, oh, actually, is that there is an option, isn't there? Again, I'm not going to press it, but I think there is an option um, in the config controls to... Yeah, clear calibration. Clear it first and then start it again. Definitely. Don't try and do it without. What am I hoping to see in Microsoft Flight Sim 2024? That is a great question, Henry. Do you know, I'm... Because I come from the land of Microsoft Flight Simulator 95, I look at this simulator and I think, oh my word, how absolutely amazing is this sim now? Who doesn't look at this and think, we're just spoiled? We are absolutely spoiled by what we've got. It's so blooming gorgeous. What can we improve upon? There are a few things, of course. Default air traffic control. Everyone wants better default air traffic control. What about the tiles popping in and out down there? You can see that happening. Let's, let's get rid of that. That would be nice if that wasn't there anymore. Some people say better airports. Default airports, that is. But, again... Um, a performance increase? Yeah, okay. Can't disagree with that. Yardi, do you reckon all of our series and planes we've gathered over the years will still be able to be used in 24? Yes, definitely. Absolutely, definitely. Base game career mode, Cataface says. That'd be interesting, but it depends how it was done. And I think they are gearing up to that sort of thing. From the sort of previews we've seen, isn't isn't that what we've sort of seen? The firefighting, the crop dusting, and all those rescue missions. I don't want to say it looks more like a game than a flight simulator, but we shall wait and see. Now, Simon, you, Simon's just said uh, something which I was about to say. Uh, he says that I'm led to believe that Microsoft Flight Sim 24 will be better for lower-end PCs as a lot of graphic detail will depend more on the size of your internet connection. Um, now, I don't know if that is true, Simon, but what I am going to say is I remember... Um, hi, Tom, thanks for subscribing. I remember when Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 um, first came out now, well, three and a half years ago now. And... Um, before Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 came out, I had a PC which I had FSX on. Um, I bought a PC for Microsoft Flight Simulator, specifically for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, and I bought it when they announced the specifications for the upcoming Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. Uh, I was so excited because all this, this just it looked phenomenal. Do you remember the trailers? They were they were awesome. Um, and when the PC came, I fired it all up, set it all up, and I put FSX on it. And of course, FSX ran quite well. But do you know what I was surprised at? When Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 was installed on it, well it ran better than FSX did. FSX being 20 years old, or whatever it was, 16 years old, Microsoft Flight Simulator ran better on that and was better optimised than FSX. So I would like to think that maybe, because the reason they're bringing out Flight Sim 2024 is because a lot of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020's sort of internal coding and all the background stuff, which I don't understand, is apparently based on a lot of old FSX code, which they have sort of reached the limit of what they can do with. Hence, bring out the new flight simulator with new coding. Who knows? We might get better. We might get better performance um, as, uh, as we did. 
Cameron, when's it getting released? Do we know? Oh, I reckon that I've, I've already tossed my hat in the ring and said I'm I'm thinking it's going to be um, August this year. That's that's my guess. Working weather radar. Yeah, fair enough. Few people saying working weather radar. Uh, working weather radar. Uh, and a proper one as well. John, mate, thank you so much uh, for your support. Welcome to Training Captain Level Membership, John. Um, the, uh, the top tier level support. John, make sure you get yourself in the VIP lounge as well on our Discord server. And, uh, yeah, as a training captain, you're uh, able to chat, of course, to me one-on-one -on -one whenever you need to. And... Uh, yeah, help you with anything that uh, that I can. Just not hardware. I'm useless at hardware and PCs. <laughs> I'll teach you to fly instead, John. <laughs> but mate, I really appreciate that. Thank you so so much for supporting us. Very generous of you. Stuart, more accurate weather. Do you know what, Stuart? I've not had a problem with Microsoft Flight Simulator's weather for oh, a couple of years now. I remember there were a few outages when the sim first came around, but I've been okay with the weather. I don't know, I've, I've I've quite enjoyed it. Organ, good default ground service rather than GSX. Ooh, that is a good shout. I mean, when GSX works, it's great. But when it doesn't, it's a pain in the old proverbial. Uh, Caterpillar says, yeah, he wants virtual airlines or some sort of career mode because it gives, uh, it gives the sim a purpose. I do get that. I do get that. The purpose is definitely good. I do remember years ago when I was heavily into FSX, I had, oh god, what was it called? Air Hauler, maybe? Which I thought was great. Then I think they brought out Air Hauler 2, I just thought, oh god, this is far too complicated. I wanted something that was quick and easy. <clears throat> right, let me have a look at the weather, see how this is doing. Um, why is that there like that? That should have been imported, yeah, airborne. Um, let's have a look at the arrival weather here. Visibility 4.5. This was 40 minutes ago. 34012, light snow, scattered 800 feet. Okay, so yeah, it's not changed at all. Uh, Lulu, if you could make a technical um, observation and criticism of the flight model, crosswind landings in commercial jet aircraft could use some work. Don't need elevator into the wind during decrab, and it feels really, uh, really weird. Do you know, though, that's one of those things where I've heard different people say different things. Um, now, I don't know, to be fair, if that's the simulator or if that's the aircraft itself. Now, when the Phoenix A321 first came out, all oh, crosswind landings were a nightmare. And the reason for that is because you actually lost uh, aileron control. Um, below, I think it was... Uh, when you were, when you were inputting any rudder control, you lost aileron control, um, which yeah is a uh, is not good. It's better now. Hey Cube, I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, Simon, you're asking, um, with FPS busy airports, particularly on VATSIM, I think you might need to upgrade. So, the flight models that we get for st uh, for our traffic, that obviously um, makes a big difference, doesn't it, as well? So, if you've got you know really detailed 
uh, aircraft models, that just eats up your performance. Uh, Custard, do I have the DC-6? Uh, I think I might have had that a while ago. It's not currently installed, though. Stuart, better helicopter flight model. Now, you see, Stuart, I never touch... Um, I never, ever touch uh, helicopters. They, they scare the life out of me. So many things can go wrong with a helicopter. If I lose an engine, or even two engines, in an aircraft... I've got a good chance of being able to dump it somewhere semi-survivable. You lose the uh, you, you lose the engine in a helicopter, or the rotor blade at the back of the helicopter, and well, you're just going to spin down, aren't you? Uh, John says thank you for your great videos. Your contribution to the community is huge and much appreciated, and it's been a pleasure chatting with you, John. Thank you so much. I do uh, appreciate your channel membership as well, as I say, and uh, yeah, it's it's flights like this where we've actually got time to sit, chat, and relax, which is what I really like. Uh, Lulu says the weather radar is one of the things not too uh, not too bothered about. Um, it's uh, an incredibly complex science, and I imagine it's uh, really uh, computationally heavy for the desktop sim. Again, I know nothing about how to code anything like that, um, but I would imagine it's going to be easier than the real life one because the simulator knows, doesn't it? The simulator knows where it's putting rain and turbulence and things. It's not like it has to actually work like a Doppler weather radar. Um, I'm guessing. So um, yeah, but but it would be nice, particularly when you're flying with the uh, with CBs around and stuff. It'd just be, uh, and and there are some operational procedures where you know you one of you has to have um, one of you normally has a weather radar on your navigation display. The other one has the terrain uh, example. So there are some sometimes where it, it would be nice to to have both. Hi, Liana. Welcome. What a way to introduce yourself to the street. What? Liana, what are you doing? I'm flying to an airport that I need a really good aircraft for. And Liana's just come and uh, decided that they're going to wreck my aircraft. Of course you are. Thanks, Liana. Good to see you, honestly. <laughs> Has Dark Fury put you up to this? Or Dan? Could be down. We'll close the vote in nine minutes. I'll let it run for half an hour, and we'll see how that's uh, how that's going. Right. So at some point. Something on my aircraft is going to break. As Liana has cashed in some of the points. Let's hope it's nothing major. How long have you been lurking for, then? I've got a really nice approach set up, really nice views. So, a failure has been um, has been triggered uh, down here, but um, these are the worrying ones. These are the worrying ones because I've got no idea what's broken. <laughs> it, it, I've not had a big Eep cam alert. Or anything, so could be anything. It's 
What's that Vagar over there? Oh, I don't like that place. It's 160 miles away. What's the weather doing there? Let me have a look. Particularly now, I might have something go wrong on my aircraft. Um, I mean, random failures are always turned on, but... What is it? EKVG. Send that off, see what's happening. <laughs> John says, speaking of losing an engine, when I flew the A330 over the Atlantic, I'd keep a marine traffic app handy. In case we had to ditch, we'd rather ditch near a cruise ship than a Russian tank job. <laughs> now that is situational awareness. <laughs> How low would you have to? Oh, oh to be fair though, if you were uh, if you're on a 330, I'm presuming you might have got some uh, some internet. <laughs> but what a way to think about it. Right, what's happening in Vega? I mean, the weather's never good there, is it? Um, Two five zero sixteen, overcast three hundred. We even get in there? Probably not. Let me have a quick look. Really hope Navigraph update this app. I hate how slow it is nowadays. It used to be really responsive and now it's frustrating. Leanna, it wasn't accidental time. You'd waited until we were over water. Brilliant! Um Right, what are those winds? Two five. Okay, so we'll look in ILS Zulu three zero I'm guessing. Normal visual range needs to be one seven. Ah. Oh well we're buggered then. Vega is not an option. Uh, although, what's this approach? ILS Victor. I might be able to game with this. Um, Runway visual range 800 meters. Oh, I could get in with that one. Yeah, that's doable. Two five zero at sixteen. Yeah, that work. How long is the runway at Vega? It's not a long runway either, is it? One point eight kilometers. All right. Well, being prepared. Hey, Ant four sixty. I'm very well. Yourself. Um. Runway three zero. Uh, light rain, so we'll go good conditions. Grab that meta. Our landing weight is currently, if we had to go now, uh, let's call it 60, <coughs> 61, 62, 64, we'll probably be overweight actually, probably 65 tons, it'd be overweight landing procedure. Oh, that doesn't look good. Max manual. Oh, we could just about make it in anger if we had to. Oh, 
Hopefully things won't be that bad. Tony, we could lose an engine cowling. We're not Boeing! Oh, I can see the top of the descent, look. It's about 300 miles away. Hey, Leon, good to see you. Mark the Vagar incident, one of your favourite memories of this channel. Can you imagine if we had to go back there now? Uh, Lulu says the tray table failure, worst case scenario for any Airbus pilot, especially if it's lunchtime. <clears throat> hey, Pilots in Phoenix, good afternoon. Uh, Box 12, will I do a flight for Cross the Pond? <sighs> no, mate. They they obviously take place on a Saturday, and I'm always with my family on a weekend. That's why I very, very rarely stream on a weekend. Anthony S, good afternoon to you. Hey, Bacchus. Everyone's coming in now. Now there's a failure on the go. Thing is, whatever failure it is, it's clearly not something that I need to be worried about. <laughs> Until I try and get a landing gear down or extend some flaps. Um, but... Yeah, I can't see anything. Everything's all fine. That I can see. Yeah, there you go. That's what I like to see. Normal. System status is normal. Right, we've had 111 votes. It's been half an hour. Let me check this poll out. So who's winning? Of course it is the A380 from Fly-By-Wire. Followed closely by the 777 PMDG. A350 by intervals and then the A380 by intervals. Do you know what? If I had to pop them in order, I'd that's pretty much the order I think I would have I would have bet. But nearly half the guys in the chat wanting the fly by wire aircraft. Leanna Paul was missing two options, none of the above, and the A319. Oh the Phoenix A319, yeah, that's gonna be nice. That's gonna be very nice. So from an open operational uh, point of view, the Phoenix um uh, the A319 when that comes out that that can cause you some great issues because obviously max landing weight on long distances no extra fuel rubbish weather you know you can get yourself into a little bit of a pickle at times there so that's gonna be that's gonna be good fun clever you've just asked on the discord navigraph app for tablets etc has been updated with improved response has it are you sure right hang on then I've got time to do this. I'm close my Navigraph app down. I'm going to go to the App Store. See if I can update it. Is there an update available? Ah! Oh. Why doesn't it do it automatically? Is it meant to do it automatically? Look, top right. Apparently there's an update for that. I'll update it then. Then we'll see what the uh, responsiveness uh, is like. Because that's the only thing that's lagging, isn't it, at the minute? Oh, apparently it was released five days ago. Oh, so people must have been kicking off about it. Because I found it appalling since it first opened. Right. Let's have a first look at the updated Navigraph app then. See if it's any good. Just let it load all in. Alright, so this is... new. Hmm... Okay, so, as I'm tapping away on my tablet here, it is a bit better. I wouldn't say it's perfect. It is a bit better. We're not doing any of these approaches, by the way. I'm just tapping away to see what's what. Alright, fine.
Could be worse. Could be worse. Thick cloud layers down there. We're not seeing. Uh... Not seeing the beautiful ocean floor, are we? Leanna, so far you're disappointed with this particular failure. Leanna, to just remember. Wait till I start changing the configuration of the aircraft. What if what if I get a flaps or slats jam when I go config two or something like that? Lulu says typical North Atlantic this time of year. Yeah, boring, isn't it? <laughs> but you want a boring flight. Boring flight's perfect. And it's never boring when we've got you guys to chat with. Uh, Clever says there was also a bug in that if you change destination runway... Ah, see, I never did anything like that. I never build any routes up in Navigraph. I let Simbrief do uh, do that, then I double-check that they actually make sense. Steve, if you don't have a current Eric cycle installed in the Phoenix, any request doesn't load. Um, are you sure? You may get... Um, you may get a sort of mismatch uh, thing because basically it's not if you haven't got an air cycle installed in the Phoenix. It is if your um, air cycle in the simulator is different from the one in the Phoenix. They have to match and of course different from Simbrief if you're using Simbrief. They all have to be the same. Also, if your engines are running, Steve, it'll dump it into the secondary flight plan, not the uh, primary flight plan. So you have to go hunting for that. So where's this sun then? Any sign of the moon? When's that eclipse meant to... Uh, when's that eclipse meant to start? Right, so I'm just going through the tablet now, and then I want to start uh, popping some things into the box <coughs> to uh, help our approach. We'll brief it, then look at all the various little threats and uh, and things. This is going to be a fun approach, a bit like Tiva, as well. Lots of NDBs. I wonder if we'll get in. Remember, three tons, if I'm not happy, then we're off to Keflavik. And look at the MSA as well. 6268. Definitely going to be a stabilised approach, not decelerated for this one. I descent towards the airport. Begins quite a way out actually. About eleven miles out. At least if things do go wrong, the missed approach looks pretty straightforward. Mr. Approach Point is four and a half miles from Touchdown. No, it's not actually. It's four and a half miles from the uh, localizer. Don't confuse the two. It looks fun, this, doesn't it? Happy to uh, 
get into that soon. Before we do that, though, I am... Uh, <clears throat> before we do that, I'm going to have to go and use the facilities. Uh, Leanna says the charts seem reasonably snappy on the Samsung tablet. I might just need to restart the uh, the iPad then, then. It, uh, it, it could be that. Obviously, I've not restarted it whilst uh, whilst we're live. Clever says, according to USA Today, the eclipse will begin in Mexico at... Set oh, I have no idea what PDT and EDT times and CDT times are. Uh, then who makes the uh, Akiari scenery? Um, Azobo. There is a payware one, but I've not got that, so we're just using the Azobo one because it is handcrafted. So we'll see that um, in about an hour or so. We're on the ground in an hour. Okay, guys, I'm going to leave you with a beautiful view of the uh, cloud-covered North Atlantic. Uh, I'm going to nip to uh, the facilities on the aircraft, and, uh, yeah, whilst, uh, whilst we do that... Oh, cool. That's in traffic, heading back in the opposite direction. Um, and then when we come back, then um, we will come back, fill the box out, get everything in there, discuss how we're going to fly the approach and uh, do some threat and uh, error management uh, discussions. Cool. Alright guys, stick with us and uh, yeah, I will be back in uh, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. A little gap in the uh, in the overcast cloud there. You can just see the ocean floor through it with the sun reflecting off it. Okay guys, see you, uh, see you in a couple of minutes.
Ah, right, guys, back with you. Oh, I'm gutted. Wife's just put a little washing in. Found 20 quid in my pocket and kept it. <laughs> uh, Lulu, the Navigraph's good on your iPad too. I probably just need to restart it then, don't I? Uh, so how can you track my flight? Yeah, any VATS in map or anything like that, you'll be able to uh, find us. There are some breaks in the cloud now, aren't there? It looks quite windy down there, actually. In fact, it looks very windy down there. Doesn't look like the kind of uh, sea you want to be dumping an aircraft into, does it? <laughs> Wayne. <laughs> Says I saw an old lady drop a £20 note. She hadn't noticed and carried on walking. I thought to myself, what would Jesus do? <laughs> so I turned it into wine. <laughs> Jamie, what you do tend to see at this height is, um, you know, if it's really windy you, you and it's not smooth, <clears throat> not smooth uh, water. You will see what they call white capping, you know, when obviously the ocean swells and it doesn't look like a sea of perfect blue. Right, I am going to start preparing for this arrival because we're only about 160 miles away now, so stuff to, uh, stuff to do. Uh, Ada, do I use the auto FPS? No, I don't use any of those, not at the moment. Oh, Jamie, if you're a sailboat race, you'll know exactly what I mean. Then. But you can see those from altitude. Right, let's grab some information. So it's the Lock Alpha approach for uh, runway 01, Cat C. That's us. Minimum's going to 1, 2, 50. I'm just grabbing some nav aid information off here. So we've got the Bodden NDB. So we'll pop that in, in a second, which is uh, November Bravo. Um, <coughs> the final approach track is a zero, zero, 007 degrees. That's important. We'll explain why shortly. Uh, other nav aids that we've got as well. Um, we want the Kilo November. NDB and also the uh, Akieri VOR Alpha Kilo India. So we'll program all those into the box in uh, in a moment. I must say we've uh, taken a bit of a look at as well. That's based off November Bravo, which is down here right at the start of the approach. Platform altitude is 3,600 feet. And it's 3.3 degrees, the uh, flight path um, angle, descent angle. <coughs> Nothing else off there which I need for the moment. Um, oh, actually, what's our missed approach? It is 6,000 feet with a max speed of 185. So these are all things that I just scribbled down in front of me and I've got the information readily available. If I was uh, here in sort of real life, then this is when the tray table would come into its own. Thrill of flight, good afternoon. All right. 
So let's start uh, putting some of this uh, this stuff in the box. So the flight plan. Let me just check we've got the right uh, arrival in here. So we want the lock one alpha. I've actually got the wrong one in there, but yeah, that's the one that we want from Guild Two. Insert. Uh, now we're going to check that that is accurate. So the approach begins here. There's Giltu. Let's put constraints on as well. Perfect. They all match up with the uh, chart that I've got next to me. So Giltu Delta 2515 cubic, 215 cubic rather. Charlie Lima 01. Fox Lima 01. Um, 7-0 Lock. And uh, what have we got after that? And the missed approach point. Which is Mike Lima 01. Just there. Okay, that's fine. And then after that, we are flying this sector visually. Looking at the pappies and out the window. Fingers crossed the weather is going to be good enough. So the flight plan's happy. Let's fill out the Radnav page with uh, the information from uh, from the charts. So we we'll want Kilo November. Uh, yep, yeah, that one 221 miles away. We we'll want November Bravo. 230 miles away. And the Akiri VOR, which is Alpha Kilo India. <coughs> Frequency 1136, that's the one. Okay, radar page is set. Um, B I couldn't remember the ICO code for this. B I A R runway zero one. That's in there, 290 miles to run. That's as the crow flies though, not to uh, track miles. Okay, let's get the latest weather information into here. So the minimums are 1250. It is going to be a flaps full landing, not flaps three. Just grab the latest weather. So we have got um, three four zero at twelve for the winds. They've not really changed much. Q and H one zero zero one. Temperature one degree. Clean is 230, uh, S is 190, and our minimum is 125, so that's fine. VAT 141. Keep an eye on that as we're going down. Okay, approach page is filled out. Looks like we've got light rain and snow as well. Uh, so the QNH was a resort one. Set that. Second flight plan, then now we will um, copy the active. Alright, so the box is sorted. We'll be heading down in about 100 miles. Let's start briefing um, the airport itself. Uh, oh, actually, one more thing I need to do just before we do that.
as to the arrival performance. So runway zero one, runway condition code is good. Applied uh, latest meta landing. We're going to be about sixty four point five, so we're very close to max landing weight. Auto brake low. Uh, we are going to just double check, do a calculation with runway condition code two because it is wet. Um, that tells us that idle reverse isn't going to be sufficient so we're going to use max manual for um, uh, max reverse for landing so <coughs> that's good water brake low water brake medium yeah I think medium is a good shout uh, and we are flaps full as well uh, well actually yeah we'll use auto brake low then if I'm not happy we can always use max, uh, we can always use the pedal brakes but water brake low should be fine it is a slightly steeper approach, remember, so... But we should be okay on that. Alright, so, happy with the uh, landing information. Let's uh, talk about how we're going to set ourselves up. Uh, yeah, this is the Phoenix aircraft pulled up, up indeed. <coughs> so, this is the approach we're doing. Uh, Lock Alpha. We can't do the ILS approach. Company is not licensed for that. Um, too steep a, a, a angle for the uh, for the localizer uh, ILS approach in there. So the approach will begin at Gil Two, and how we're going to approach this? We're going to do a stabilized approach, which means by the time I get down to Fox Lima Zero One here, we obviously we want to be at three thousand six hundred feet, gear down flaps three. By the time we get there, then. The plan will be to use. Just bring that in. Yeah. By the time we get to Fox Lima Zero One here, uh, the plan will be to use the um, localizer approach. So we'll have localizer on for uh, for this, and we will be getting down using uh, track FPA. Um, because then once we get 0 0.3 miles from Fox Lima 01, then we're going to pull for a descent 3.3 degree and we'll start heading down the, uh, down the approach. Now we'll continue to go down until we get to uh, the minimums, which is 1,250 feet. At that point then, we're looking out the window. We're going to be looking over, uh, over here on the left. Um, until we see the runway and we see the pappies. Once we're happy with that, then it'll be autopilot off, flight directors off. Um, we will set the inbound track, which is 007, make that left turn, line up with the runway, and of course it's a manual, uh, <coughs> manual landing. Um, so that is the technique that we're, we're, yeah, we're basically going to be using to... Um, to land. If we need to go missed, it's pretty straightforward to be fair. We are just uh, straight out from the missed approach point, which has us turning essentially just towards the runway. And um, yeah, we just fly straight over uh, the Oscar Echo locator to the Hotel Julia NDB and uh, intercepting that radial. Now all of that will be in the box down here presumably. I'll just double check that it is in case we have to do anything. That looks good. Let's just move to the plan mode. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so we don't actually we can we can fly the go around in uh, in nav mode because it's all it's all computed in there, uh, keeps us safe. Um, missed approach is six thousand feet, and max speed one eight five, which means we wouldn't do it um, we wouldn't do it in clean config. We'd do it in flaps one. So that's how I'm going to fly the approach. Just to confirm, so you guys are happy with the box. We've seen that the approach coding is all fine. We've seen the missed approach is all there. Uh, Radna page, we've got the Akiri VOR. We've got the two NDBs as well in case we need them. Um, runway 01 
is in there. That's fine. Uh, weather 340 at 12. Landing fully config. Minimums are correct. Q and H one zero zero one. Landing weight. We've planned for 64 and a half tons, which is at the max landing weight, so we know we're good to stop. Secondary flight plan is uh, the same as the active flight plan, so no differences there. Okay, so now we spoke about how I'm going to fly um, the approach. Let's have a look at uh, errors and threats. So the biggest threat, of course, there's a f well, there's a few of them. Uh, the biggest threat. Uh, most obvious threat is of course the terrain. We're going down a valley, so we're gonna have terrain to the left, to the right. The only get out is literally to overfly the runway and out the valley to the uh, to the north, as you can see just uh, just here. So the thing that also makes this quite a threat today is the uh, the weather. So we've got clouds at although they are starting to clear, but. Visibility is 8 kilometers, so we're legal to start the approach, but it's scattered 1,300 feet. That's better than it was. It was down, it was forecast to be down as low as 600 feet, so that's better for us. But there's still a chance that we might not see that runway. Because um, what are the minimums? 1,250, <laughs> and this is 1,300. So it could be quite close. We'll see what the simulator's like with replicating that weather. So that is a big threat. Um, terrain around us and the fact that the visibility is very, very close to our minimum. So it it could be exciting, couldn't it? It's also an offset approach as well. With, uh, I mean, that's pretty obvious. Um, with a visual landing segment. So that's, um, that's another threat. Uh, we've spoke about what we're going to be doing about leveling off at the minimum descent altitude and then looking for that runway and pappies and lining ourselves up with those. Step down approach as well to maintain terrain clearance. Uh, I could do this in two ways. I could literally wind the FCU down to 3,600 feet and put it into managed descent mode for this. Uh, I could do that but if I find I'm not happy with how fast it's getting us down, because it's sometimes a bit more responsive in open descent mode, I can just pop it down to open descent and just dial these into the FCU manually. So I think that is going to be my um, preferred method, to be honest. I think we'll use open descent with, uh, with that. Or I might use managed descent to begin with to get down 5, 8 to 4, 3. If it works, great. If I'm not happy, then I will... You know, I'll pull for open descent, get some spoilers out, and uh, get us down. But the idea as well is that Giltu, I want absolutely to be, at a very minimum, at Giltu, we're going to be flaps one. Because we haven't got a lot of space to get down, a lot of uh, distance between those uh, those waypoints. The other threat, the descent angle is 3.3 degrees. That's steeper than the norm as uh, as well. So that's going to be uh, an earlier flare than normal. The picture's going to look a little bit more nose down than, uh, than we're used to. Um, I don't think this is replicated in the sim, but the pappies on the left will show different to the pappies on the right in real life. But, um, yeah, I don't think that's actually going to be... That's actually going to be replicated. Uh, so, yeah, that... I think that pretty much covers the... Um, <coughs> the threats. Um, as we are going down, recommended altitudes are given here on the chart, so we'll obviously cross-reference uh, those. 10 feet is the equivalent to um, 0.1 degrees, so I can adjust the descent angle uh, as we're going down if we're too high or, uh, or too low with, um, with that. Uh, copy racing, this is the Phoenix um, Airbus A320 that we are that we are flying today. Right, if all goes well and we actually get on the ground, then we're probably not going to stop at Bravo. That would be impressive if we did. Uh, that's the North Apron. That's no good to us actually. We need to get on the apron at Alpha. Um, yeah. Alpha stand one. 45 meters wide. That's going to be fine. We can turn around on that. So no need to go all the way to the end. Just stop the aircraft to spin around. I haven't seen anything on the charts to say that we can't do that. So that's fine. 
Great, this should be exciting. In about uh, 20 miles, it all begins. Uh, FG, where do you find the runway conditions? So in real life, you'd probably get those on the ATIS uh, or snow tams if it's snowing. Now, honestly, we did this a bit earlier in the stream. The only way to get snow tams um, is to Google them, and they are there, but they're obviously only there for areas of the world where it is cold and uh, snowing. Just another little error as well, remember, when we do, as we are going to be in track FBA mode, when we turn the autopilot off to uh, fly manually, then we do need to make sure that flight directors are off and speed mode is uh, engaged here. Right. Welcome to Iceland. Stunning stuff. If you have enjoyed the flight and you're looking forward to the approach before things start to get busy, please do hit the like button. If you're in the mood for uh, shopping with Innerbuilds uh, to grab either their aircraft or amazing scenery, then please do use the link at the top of the chat or in the video description. It supports the channel at the same time. And there's also a link in the uh, video description to the Aviation Merch Store as well, where you can find some really cool stuff. Uh, Jamie, this is my only flight today, I'm afraid, Jamie. Nice long one. just realised that the uh, overhead display seems bugged, doesn't it? Let me see if I can uh, fix that again. Ladies and gentlemen, take full advantage of your tax-free allowances today and make some amazing savings with our boutique range. In your in-flight brochure, you'll find details of our award-winning selection of gifts, most with massive discounts, some of which are exclusive to you as an EasyJet customer. Make the most of your opportunity to shop and save from the comfort of your seat. If you'd like to see any products, have any questions, or would like to make great savings, then just ask us as we join you in the cabin shortly. Ah, it looks uh, a bit better. I think it's working now. Hey, Eclipse. I'm very well, thank you. Hope you are as well. Uh, Pilot Trish, you flew into Akiari this year for real, and it is a stunning approach with all the snow. Well, I actually think the EasyJet have now stopped. Right, that's our top of descent. Um, I think the last flight was a few days ago, so, um, yeah, it's uh, sort of the end of the season now. Alright, speed descent 170 blue, down we go. Uh, pilot stopped it for good. Not for good, no, no, I think it, it was just a seasonal route, so I, it'll probably be back next year, pilot. Tris. Um, Aviation Fin, how do you calculate your landings? Calculate them in what way, Aviation Fin? Um, <laughs> a good, for me, a good landing is one where I can reuse the aircraft again. I also did read out earlier in the stream as well, so we are uh, aware that um, there are a few sort of cautions and things with this approach uh, from the chart, just reading. Adhere strictly to uh, the procedure due to high terrain, turbulence altimeter errors may be expected. Expect localizer fluctuations outside 60 miles from the um, localizer DME. Uh, Mr. Approach Point is below the 3.5 degree gradient. Fly visually level until intercepting the 3.5 degree Papi gradient. So that's important, we've said that. So essentially what we're going to do 
this is why we're leveling off so we fly all the way down um, to the missed approach point gradient mm, which is four and a half miles uh, away from the localizer level off there see the puppies actually we can uh, we'll probably level off it might be a bit uh, a bit before that 1250 feet that's the magic number we can't drop below that and then we just hope that we can actually see hopefully those clouds will be kind to us Uh, aviation fin is max auto brake needed. No, well, you can't use max auto brake uh, for landing. It's auto brake low or auto brake medium. It's max manual if you uh, if you need it. Uh, Dean, have we checked any quake tams and volt tams? Uh, no, and because they're not actually applicable in the uh, <laughs> in the simulator. How good would it be if they were? Wait for Microsoft Flight Sim 2024. That's what's coming. <laughs> hey, Jordan, didn't see you come in the chat. Jordan B, good to see you. Just seen we've also got four and a half thousand followers over on Twitch now. That's uh, slowly creeping up, guys. Thanks so much for uh, your support over there. Cleaver, is there a Madrid scenery? Um, yeah, ooh, yes, there is. Latin VFR, yes. So as we are descending, we're currently on profile at the moment. One thing to check as we're descending with the um, operational flight plan. We're headed now towards Jari, which will be near the bottom of the flight plan. Uh, where are you? Yeah, so there we go. Lowest I would be comfortable getting down to uh, looking at the grid mora is 7,000, yeah, about 7,000 feet. Keep us safe. So that's the lowest we can go down to, and I'm happy actually to select that, so. In fact, we'll leave it at 8,000 for now. Flight level 80. Down we go. 80 blue. And transition altitude is 7,000 feet. Uh, RW, how do I decide where to fly? Do you know what, RW? I probably spend more time contemplating that than I'd actually do streaming. <laughs> Maybe not quite, but it can be difficult. I mean, what makes a good stream? What makes it interesting for you guys to want to watch? This one is a flight that I've wanted to do for so long, I've just never had time to do it. But I had time to do it this afternoon, which is, uh, which is great. Right, I'm just going to pull the speed up. My cost index 4, so I'm just wind that speed up a little bit. And I'm also just going to go into open descent, just get down a little bit quicker. So we are thrust idle, open descent, and uh, eight zero uh, blue. <coughs> and we're now going to start really concentrating on this arrival because there's lots of things that uh, may go wrong that we don't want to. So we have now got three and a half tons of fuel on board, um, which is about an hour, hour and a half. After a go round, that would be a little bit less, of course. So, the CNR, the basically the magic number where I've got to say we're definitely going to land at Aguirre or we're going to go divert to Keflavik, is 2.8 tons. Now, I've said if I get to about three tons, then I'm going to be, you know, really, uh, I, I'm going to want to make a decision by about three tons. Well, we're getting close to that now. So I think the fuel that we've got, we couldn't take any extra fuel today with us because we were really heavy. Uh, the the passenger cabin is full. There's 180 passengers sat behind us. Um, we couldn't get any extra fuel because we'd have been too heavy to land here. Uh, we'd have been above our maximum landing weight. So we literally could only take plug fuel, like the planned block fuel. So I couldn't throw any more on to have another go. We get one chance to land uh, at Akieri, uh, and I think I can safely make that decision now. We're going to get one chance to land here. If I'm not happy, we can't see the airport, we're unstabilised, or for whatever reason, then it's bye-bye, off we go to uh, off we go to Keflavik. So it is going to be quite interesting. Um, 
and the alternate is uh, is there. Look, that's our alternate to Keflavik if uh, if we need it. <coughs> So one of the great things about the Airbus, I don't know how it works on Boeing, um, but yeah, you don't you don't need the secondary flight plan to, to like build up the uh, the route to your alternate because it's it's there, it's there for you. That's our manual sector, that's our landing. Then um, the blue is our go around. This is the rest of the. Uh, this is the route to uh, Keflavik. I'm just going to check that actually. That that is in there. Um, so if we're going to Keflavik, yeah, there it is. Look, direct to uh, Asko Divud. Divud for November is the arrival. Uh, Captain Data, all your in-flight uh, flight radar 24 is currently down. Is it? Ah, really? Uh, Eric, do I use standard views or fi I, I have custom views set up uh, set up for this. Jordan failures are on. In fact, Liana's redeemed one. Um, I've forgotten about that. That's making me slightly nervous because uh, I have no idea what that might be. <laughs> yeah, nothing's pinged. Wind that speed up. I want to get down a little bit sooner. Uh, right, let's get the chart up in front of me. Here it is. So, 6,800 feet at Giltu is what we want. So there we are. 6,800 blue. Uh, QNH is now 1001. We're on local uh, pressure. And let's run the approach checklist. So, QNH1001 is cross-checked. Seatbelt signs are on. Minimums 1250. Water brake medium and EFP stowed. Uh, Eric, I am still using the ones that I used to use for the very first Phoenix that was ever released. They still work, Eric, so that's, uh, that's fine. Would you know? Thank you for subscribing. Little cabin PA. You now need to be seated with your seatbelt fastened, ready for landing. Please help us by handing in any rubbish. Uh, MP auto brake set low. Yeah, we, we should be fine with low. Christian, how about we fly the ILS approach for 01 just to annoy HD? <laughs> That's more than my life's worth, Christian. Uh, Tris, those cabin announcements, it's a cabin pack, it's a sound pack that I built up for self-loading cargo, um, which I now no longer use, actually, as we've got uh, all those cabin announcements built into the Phoenix. Yeah, Jordan, the microwave's broken. Okay, so we're going to start getting prepped early because it is a higher workload with this one. We're going to get the lights on now, a bit earlier than uh, we would normally. So they're on. India Echo Yankee is identified. Activate the approach phase.
And as this is going to be a decelerated approach, no it isn't, it's going to be a stabilized approach, we're not going to be slowing down as we fly the ILS. Um, I'm going to start slowing us down now. So let's push for managed speed. We'll just level off for a moment. We've beneath the profile quite nicely, so that's fine. Just watch the level off arrow move down there. That's okay. If it doesn't slow down as fast as I would like, we've got speed brakes to help us. We can utilize those if we need. Given this kind of approach as well, and the fact that I, I only get one chance really to get in at this, we're probably not going to be going for the smoothest landing in the world. It's not a really short runway, but it is wet, it has been snowing all day, so you want a good positive contact with the ground to break through any contaminants that might be there. Uh, Christian, you could fly the Tomcat in there, because <laughs> it has a tack-on approach. Yeah, only uh, only available, isn't it, for um, for military aircraft? Right, temperatures within the icing range, and we're about to descend into that horrible cloud. So. Turn the brightness up on some of the uh, instruments because it could be dark under there. So our speed breaks out at the moment. Gary approach easy to a X-ray Tango, currently nine miles to the southeast of Gil 2 for the localizer Alpha approach runway 01. Okay, speed's good, flaps one then. Thank you, Terry Traffic, Corgan 321, we're now at 5,800 feet, speed 180, localizer approach, runway 01. Cabin crew must now be seated for landing. Thank you. Okay, we're going to hold speed uh, 180, so we've set that. And flaps 2. Speed checked. Flaps 2. Okay, so 6,800 at Guild 2, looks like we're going to be fine with that. You just see the arrow coming closer. Now Flaps 2 is out. It's uh, really got a lot of drag on the aircraft. I hate cream cheese. So that's 6,800 feet in time where Flaps 2 speed 180 and now we're making the turn so let's go down to 5800 thrust idle descent 5800 blue Talvin you've just got the mini FCU today I, I said earlier less than five minutes before starting this stream today the other FCU arrived so there will be a review on the channel this week if you uh, want to check that out. Um, 
See how it compares with the mini FCU. Okay, so we've got Art Blue, Lock Blue. And Autopilot on one. Got a nice wind slowing us down as well. White Eagle, yeah, the Win Wing. So the Win Wing FCU is literally sat right here next to me. That'll be unboxed, and we'll get a review on that very soon. Two thousand five hundred. So that's Radar Altimeter alive. As we pass 215 Quebec, next we're going down to 4003. Third side long descent, 4300 blue. Okay, I'm going to engage now uh, the track FPA mode. So that's done. One shot at this. If it's no good, we're diverting. Aki traffic easy to it. X-ray Tango. Uh, the localizer Alpha approach runway zero one, and we're 15 miles out on the localizer. Uh, Talvin, those plugs on the Mini FCU will be Thank for the Mini Ephus. Golden three two one. We're now passing through 2,800 feet. Demi uh, eight point eight at one four zero knots. Okay, so we manage the speed. We're going to start slowing down. Flaps three. Speeds checked. Flaps three. Just saw a little bit of ground down there. This is the valley that we're in. The weather not being kind to us today. Speed alt star. Thrust side low percent, 3,600 feet. lights on. Gear down. Well, it looks like the simulator is showing the meta very, very well. Okay, 3.3 uh, degrees on the approach. 0.3 miles, there we go, let's set that. FPA 3.3, down we go. And we're going to level off at 1,250. So, Mr. Approach Altitude is 6,000 feet, that is set. Why aren't we doing the ILS Antag? Because, uh, not authorised. we um, it's too steep for the Airbus. It's like 5.4 degrees, uh, the flight path angle, which is, uh, which is no good. 2,500. <coughs> we're going around. That's not a good sign. So 
someone ahead of us going around. About 800 feet to go. Remember, if we need to go around, we'll uh, toga flaps to pitch up FMA's gear up. where pilots in the past in real life have been tempted to drop below the minimum safe altitude. Terrain ahead. Pull up. Okay, we're on the approach. Terrain I'm ahead. Happy to Pull disregard up. that. It's a bit over over cautious. Terrain ahead. Pull up. And we are gonna push the level Terrain off. Terrain anyway. ahead. Pull up. Terrain ahead. Pull up. Okay, level off. Terrain ahead. Pull up. Terrain ahead. Pull up. Terrain ahead. Pull up. Can anyone see runway or puppet lights? There are lights in real life to guide you around here. Saw something just then. <coughs> I've got runway lights. We have to fly over the runway anyway, as part of the go around. Okay, flaps full. Landing checklist, camera secured, go around altitude, 6,000 feet set. You can't remember landing up though. Stabilised by 500 feet. I think we're going to be pushing it, to be honest. Five hundred. Four white. What are they set to? this safely. 100. Maybe. 50, 40, 30, 20, retard. 5. Was the approach legal in the end? Probably not. Manual brakes. Truth be told, I didn't have time to divert, <laughs> so we did have to have a little bit of get there itis. <laughs> My apologies for that. Not legal, not stable, but down in one piece, Christian. Quite right. Yeah, the the the, the four whites would have been the uh, the key. So 
had I not seen the runway lights, I, I wouldn't. We'd, we'd have gone around because we'd have had nowhere to land. But I didn't have time to do the go around. Or rather, I'd have had time to do the go around. I wouldn't have had time to fly to Reykjavik, and we didn't have the fuel to do the. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, the cabin crew will shortly to do the journey to Reykjavik. To perform safety-related duties, however, we ask that you remain seated until the fastened seatbelt sign has been switched off. Portable electronic devices for messaging, calls, or internet access may now be used. Please make sure that you take all your personal belongings with you, checking in the seat pocket, underneath the seat, and in the overhead lockers. Do take care when opening the lockers in case anything falls out. Smoking is not permitted until you reach a designated smoking area. On behalf of the captain and the crew, it has been our pleasure looking after you today. Our ground crew will help you complete your EasyJet journey. For the latest news, promotions, flight and destination information, check out our official Facebook page, Twitter or EasyJet app. Oh, it would have been much nicer if the weather had been, uh, been decent, but at least it made it a bit exciting, didn't it? If you are on your way out after that, then please don't forget to leave a like as you go. Check out the video description as well for uh, promotions and discounts in the Aviation Merch Store. Uh, Christian, yeah, 45 metres according to the charts anyway. Passengers don't know it was a lim it was an illegal landing. That <laughs> that's all that matters. They're just happy that they're not spending their night in the wrong city. Uh, David, I did say it was a beautiful approach, but you couldn't see anything. No, not my fault. This taxiway looks a bit narrow. <laughs> not, not sure that's modelled correctly. Hey, Antrak. Good afternoon. See you again, David. Hey, Big Mac. Uh, Simon, is there a delete button for the flight data record? Yeah, there is. <laughs> Actually, Simon, yes. <laughs> I have no idea where we park here. It's not the largest apron. In fact, I think, I'm not sure if this actually has the latest update because they've got a new, I think they've recently had a new, uh, a new apron. I highly recommend everyone go ahead and try this approach when the weather is nicer. Are you sure this is the wrong apron? Oh, it might be. Whoops. We should be on the northern one. I thought we should have been on the southern one. If I just put my wing through an office window. Oh, no. We're okay. Ah, max wingspan 15 meters. Whoops. <laughs> why this weather's getting worse it looks good though doesn't it I like the fact that the cars are all covered with snow as well that's that's neat 
Here's the marshal. I'm thinking, where the frig have you been? Here he is, look. I do think my wing's going to uh, knock this uh, staircase over. Terry Traffic, Organ 321 now on the right side of Approach Runway 01. Uh, hopefully we'll get them this time. <laughs> Christian, the, the Marshal looks like Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's on holiday. Moonlighting. Right, well, let me get the parking brake on and we'll not talk about that uh, that flight again, shall we? Uh, this was a real world flight, yes, Big Mac. That uh, That is right. Um, is the APU up and running? Yes, it is. Wonderful. Okay. Um, so, engine one, engine two. Shut those down. See what signs. Uh, off. A bit of APU bleed in there. Might warm this up a little bit now because it's freezing here. Uh, does that drop below 10? Give it a sec. God, they're slowing down slowly. There we go. The CRV race. There we go. <laughs> I told you there was a button for that. <laughs> and request D. Uh, request D boarding. Oh, D boarding has been requested apparently. So that's uh, that's good. Yeah, there they come. Uh, pumps. Get a little off. They're fine. Uh, external power. Yeah, wonderful. Squawk two thousand. Set that to standby, set that back to above. Did I press the test button? Oh, sorry, the erase button. Yep. Just press and hold that one instead. HD will never know. Great stuff. And, um,. Passengers will think I'm absolutely amazing because I I got them to the destination after they thought we might have had to go around. But uh, no, they're going to be quite happy. So uh, yeah, I'll stand here and greet everyone. Say thanks very much, guys. You're uh, more than welcome. <laughs> um, I've had a look at the failure. It was one of the centre tank fuel pumps. It wasn't used. Sorry, Liana. Not uh, not on today. Not on today's flight. But, uh, but there we are. So if we wanted to debrief that approach then, um, there was absolutely nothing wrong with the approach. The approach was fine. Um, where it became not a real ops flight is, um, yeah, when, when we couldn't see the pappies. Um, we went past the missed approach point, couldn't see the pappies. Um, and at that point, that's when we should have gone, do you know what? turn towards the airport, fly the go around, and off we go. Uh, which I was very close to doing. I then saw the runway lights and thought, oh, go on then, let's see if we can make it. Had I not been able to get down in the touchdown zone, I would have gone around. Um, but in real life, you'd have never got that far. Uh, I didn't have time to fly. I could have done the go around, but then I wouldn't have had time to fly to Keflavik, I'm afraid, because I do need to disappear now. Um, so I did want us to... Uh, I did want us to uh, to get down, and uh, well, there we are. But it is nice to see that Microsoft Flight Simulator's weather um, was uh, was actually uh, doing its uh, doing its thing because this is effectively the the meta. So um, so yeah, that was it. So guys, thank you so much for uh, for watching. I do hope you have enjoyed the flight in all the fun and games and the intensity of the arrival. Um, I can. 
completely forgot to hit the replay, so we don't have a replay for that, which is good because this landing technically never happened. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope to be streaming a lot more now that school holidays and Easter and all that stuff is over. So uh, stick with us. See you all in Discord. Thank you as always to our Jets and Fan channel members. Thank you, Kelly Trapper, Gorgon 321. Final approach runway 01. Support us as, uh, as always. And thank you so much to all of our. Uh, supporters both on Twitch and on uh, on YouTube. I look forward to seeing you on the next flight. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I shall see you uh, see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Ta -ra. And don't tell HD. Good night. <laughs>